investment. So, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the introduction to trucking workshop. If you're here to learn about trucking and getting your business started and other things, you're in the right room. If you're here to learn how to dress, you're not in the right room. That's, that's a different one down all the way. But we're so glad to have you here this morning. My name is Myron Pullen, and I'll be one of your instructors today. Uh, that's going to talk to you about some things, and uh, you'll hear you'll meet others throughout the, the course of the morning that are here to just help you with what I call your dollar in your dream. And how many of you are already in business? Okay, some of you are already in business. Some of you just have I got an idea, and I want to get it started, right? So here's what I want you to think of, think like, right? Some of you already have jobs, eight to five, and all that sort of stuff. I get it. You want to maybe break off into the trucking world in some capacity. Part time, some of you are going to go all in full time, and so you have to decide which ones will work for you at some point, no doubt. But I want to tell you, business as I see business is like this it's a puzzle, and that's how I see it a puzzle of many pieces. You guys remember the puzzle that we had in the box, not the one on your phone, but the one that was in the box, and you knew what the puzzle looked like because you could look at the work. You could look at the picture. You could look at the picture on the box. And this is what it looked like. So imagine if I took that box, opened it up, and threw those thousand pieces on the table, and I just kind of stood there and looked at them, and go like, "That's a lot of pieces," but I know there's a business in there because I can do what I can see what the finished product looks like. So that's where many of you are. You're looking. At, I want to get started, and I know it's a lot of stuff to do, and I don't know all the answers. I don't have all the answers, but you're in the right place to get started. If that's what you want to do, because the people that you're going to meet are going to be pivotal, I believe, in helping you move forward with your business ideas. Okay, so imagine that as you're looking at that puzzle piece, those pieces of the puzzle, where would you start? Where would you start if you're just looking at a bunch of pieces? Because it's thousands of them. You got an idea, but you really don't have a roadmap. So you got to pick pieces up. So constantly remind yourself this. Every day that I'm in business or as I'm going to get into business, I'm learning new things. I'm picking up more pieces of the puzzle. So if you're looking at these pieces, where would you start? You probably, like in a regular puzzle, where would we start? We start with the edges and the framework, the smooth edges, the things we can readily identify, right? And what I typically call that is the research, the things I've done like some of you have done on your own to get your business idea off the ground. You didn't just come up and say, I want to do this. I have no clue. And uh, so let me Google some stuff or let me do a little research or maybe I'm talking to somebody else who's already in business or something like that. So there's many ways for you to do research, but keep in your mind, research is pivotal. It's key. It's key. Every day, it's a little bit more. And as you pick up those pieces towards your business, doesn't the picture become a little bit clearer? Becomes a little bit clearer. Now, I want to tell you this, too, up, up front. You may never pick up all the pieces. You can start your business without the puzzle being complete. Because even when you're in business, Tim and I and others that are already in business, some of you, there's more pieces to pick up that you didn't even know. Even if you're running a business right now, there's something always new to learn. So I don't think the puzzle is ever really completely filled. It's just more things I learned and more things I have to do. How many of you in, here, in this room has ever, have ever done payroll? Or, or, you know, if you're on the camera, if you're at home watching this or wherever you are, if you've done payroll. So I've got one or two people, maybe, with their hands. So do you think payroll might be a, a puzzle piece that you need to pick up? Sure. How do I get that done? Where do I go to get a puzzle I mean, to pick, learn about payroll. Well, we help you with all of those sort of things. And we do that through the organization called SCORE, which is how you got here. Through SCORE. SCORE is an SBA resource partner, a key partner filled with lots of folks who have been in corporate America or own their own businesses for years and years and years uh, with special skills in some cases. And they're ready to get back to the next generation of entrepreneurs. And that's what SCORE is. Just. So that's how you got here. We're the folks, and I'm a SCORE mentor as well. I do more teaching than I do mentoring because I have tons of stuff to do. And um, so for the folks, for those of us who get right in front of a mentor, man, if we can get in front of a mentor, 
we pick our brains. We become your mentors, guys. And we're the ones that go along that journey with you for as long as it takes to get started. And we help you pick up those pieces along the way. Now, we don't do the work necessarily for you. As I always say, you got to give birth to the baby. That's your, that business is your idea. I'll be a good midwife. We'll be good midwives. But the pain of opening that and getting that business started is yours. Got it? Okay, this is your dream. You get it started. So without further ado, what I want to start out talking about this morning is the business plan. So imagine this. Anybody here military or been military? Okay. Can you imagine if we went, I'm military too. Can you imagine if we had to go to, let's say, Iraq or Afghanistan and we loaded up here at Fort Hood and flew over there and, okay, now what do we do when we get it? <laughs> you know, what's, what's the plan? Can you imagine we went somewhere without a strategy? without a plan, without a design, and we're wondering what we're going to do when we get there. That's a little bit kind of late, don't you think? So if you're going to be in business, you may want to have a plan. And that's what this module talks about. That's what we're going to talk about briefly today. I've given you something, a tool that we use called the Resource Business Model Canvas. Now, I'm going to teach from another module here real quickly, but this is something I want to hand out to you, and there's a copy of it on Tim has a copy of it, so if it needs to get out to the rest of the folks who are in the virtual environment, we can get that too as well. But I'm going to talk to you about uh, this thing called the business plan and what it does and how we use it, and what we use it for. What do you think we use it for? A roadmap. It's a roadmap. It's your representation of what you conceive, what you believe, and what you want to achieve. Reduce the paper. Just like Bishop said, Bishop Jake says, he says, write the vision, make the plan. That's <laughs> if you understand what I'm saying. So we we want to make sure we put it down on paper somewhere so that when you're presenting it to whomever, they have a clear understanding of who you are, what you are, who, who's, on, who's in the battle with you, how you're going to get it done, where you're going to get it done, what's it going to take to get it done. It's all in the plan. It's all in the plan. Now, you may have heard about business plans being, you know, a stack like this. Your, your business plan doesn't have to be 900 pages. Okay, let's be clear about that. It's talking about you and who's on your team and what's your strategy and how you're going to make money and how you're going to find clients and how you're going to find customers and where are they? How do you get to them and how do you keep them coming back? That's all in your plan. They've been, but it all comes out of here. You got to get it out of here in right. You can tell me all day, but if you got to tell 15 people, you're probably going to be tired. I haven't explained it all the time. So different people look for different things. Are we able to see that? Though? Yeah, I'm hosting it right now. Okay. But um, I'll just go ahead and talk about it. So different people are going to look for different things. Um, why do you need a business plan? You need it because it's your it's your representation, it's your strategy, as I mentioned. And if you don't have a plan, then when you get to battle, you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. When you get to the battle, you're going to fail. If you fail the plan, you plan to fail. That's correct. You don't need it. So we know what? We need one. Now, granted, not every business has a business plan. I get that. Some of you have been fortunate enough to just get in there and start getting it done and you're working by the seat of your pants and you may not even have picked up some of those pieces that I was talking about. They're still laying there because you don't know what you don't know. And then when you learn, you go like, oh, I gotta run payroll. You mean I gotta pay taxes too? Oh my goodness. How do I do that? Now, I don't know if the audience here is strictly in Texas, but if you're in Texas, you got some help to help you work through all those things. Texas Workforce Commission is there to help you. They were designed to help you as business owners realize what your dream is so that when you're in it, you don't make mistakes. You learn how to pay taxes. You learn how to do uh, workman's comp and all that sort of stuff. That's just someone that says, hey, call us up and we'll help you. And, and they do that by zip code. So when you start your businesses, wherever they are, at some point, I encourage you to connect with Texas Workforce Commission so that you can what? Find out who that person is. You're going to give them your zip code 
and in your the name of your business, and they'll tell you who your person is, who that person at Texas Workforce is going to help me in my business because I've never done this before. I worked for a company for a long time. You know, I was agreed at Walmart. All of a sudden, I'm owning a business. And I don't know what I don't know. Can you help me? And they're there to help you guys. If you're going to be in business in Texas, we want you to be successful. So we got to give you some really good tools to help you along the way. And that's what we're going to do. So Texas Workforce Commission, put that down as a, as a, as a way to help you out. Um, and then when Tim's ready to get set up, then I'll walk you through some of his, um, I'm ready. Some of his mods. You're ready. Okay. All right. I want to see that. Can I see that uh, business plan slide? Or oh. well, just use it off of mine? You can use it off of yours. Okay, that's good. Let me I mean, this one here, right? No, no, the, the business, not the business model canvas, the business plan itself. Oh, yeah. the slide you're saying? Slide, the slide, the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay, I'm in the PowerPoint. So let me go back. Yeah, we'll get that up. So page one? Uh, yeah. Okay, who's the business model seven? Yes, just go ahead and keep going. Objectives? Yeah, you want me to, I can I can do it from here. Are you gonna you gonna be my side guy? Okay. Yeah, I'm okay, very good, very good. All right, guys. Okay, so the one that says objective, and then we're gonna understand the, the concept and the value of the business plan and and all the resources that are available to help you. I mentioned to you score. That's one of the resources that's available to you, an SBA resource. How many of you heard of the SBA? US Small Business Administration, a cabinet level agency created. 1953 to help small businesses navigate their way through this thing. So they've been doing it since 53. That's a long time. Longer than most of you in this room have been born, no doubt. So they've got it right. And so SCORE, Tim and I are some of the people that will help you um, with your business idea. Um, and then up in this module, I'm just going to talk about some of the essential elements. Yeah, agenda. Okay, yes. And so we tell you why you need a business plan, when should you have one, what's in it, and then we'll talk about the pitfalls that we need to avoid when we're doing that. Next. And so, as we said, if you fail a plan, you plan to fail. Uh, in preparing for battle, I've always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. I get it when you get to battle, you need a plan, but when you get in there and Everybody's got a plan. Like Mike Tyson said, what? Everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the mouth, right? It all kind of goes out the window. I know I have one, but stuff happened. COVID. COVID happened. And it just turned on, as you well know, it for a lot of businesses. Some of you may have been involved in what COVID did. The plan that we had to make our businesses work was there. It was working for us. In many cases, COVID hit, upset everything, it upset the world, literally. And so having said that, we just need to keep doing what we do. But your business plan, next slide, your business plan is your guide to action. It's the thing that you use that helps you uh, move, move to the idea of being in business. What it does is it, it gives you analysis, it helps you with your decision making. The analysis is what? Identifying the critical things you need to do. Before you start putting a lot of money, effort, and resources into it, identify some things. And how you want to do that up front? I mentioned what what's that word, that research word? Doing some research, something like because as you're doing the research on the front end, you're helping yourself understand: do I really want to do this? Am I capable of doing this? Well, you started out that way, no doubt. When you came to see us at school, we won't ever tell you your idea won't work. That's not what we do. We're there to help you move it forward. But I want you to understand that when you step into the game, it's a big boy game. Like I tell my kids, I say, you know, if you want to do big grown up things, you got to know the rules. So if we're going to be in business, we have to know the rules and we have to learn. So that's all that re research. But that's part of the analysis we're doing in our minds through the research that we encounter as we're doing things. And we'll talk briefly about what are the tool, what the tools of research are. I always want to refer back to SCORE and other resource partners because when you get with them, whether it's in person or Zoom call or, or Teams or email, those folks are there to help you and guide you through the process. The plan, is, the plan does what? It helps you with your decision making. And it's a good evaluation tool for you to make some strategic decisions. 
when you have a business plan, it's not a document or a group of documents that you create. You show it to the lender saying, here's my business idea and I need a lot of money. Who's going to need money? Is anybody going to need some money? Yes, yeah, see, normally that's what you need. You're going kind of, you know, to need some money. But where does that money come from? You'd be surprised where money comes from in a small business. You know where the where most money comes from in a, in a, a small business startup? Anybody got an idea where that money comes from? Government. Personal savings. Yeah. Personal savings, credit cards. Mm -hmm. Number one sources for getting your business off the ground. Maybe some friends and family or rich uncle up in the attic that you just say, hey, I need some money. <laughs> so your, your personal savings, retirement class, I recommend against that if I could. Your credit cards, friends and family, three, and then banks are number four. Lenders are number four on the list. That, it may be counterintuitive to the way we think because we always think we get money from somewhere else. What's that old term, OPM, right? Using other people's money? Well, let me dispel one other thing for you, too. I heard somebody say the grant word, the G word, the G word, the mm -hmm. grant word. So you're in the for-profit business. That, get that? Grant dollars are what kind of dollars? They're your tax dollars and my tax dollars. Got it? That's what grant dollars are. Your tax dollars and mine. So you're asking me to give you my tax dollars to start your business. How's that sound? Here, man, what am I going to get out? Here, take this money. Here's my tax money that I pay, and you can just go ahead and get your business started. Do you think it works like that? No, it doesn't work that way. So from the standpoint of the SBA, there's no grant dollars. I don't want to bust your bubble. Now, I'm not saying you can't get grants because there's programs out here in this county and other counties that say we want to help small business owners. So we have some funds and some set aside available for you, but for the sake of you getting your business off the ground and getting it started, grant dollars are up. You know, just kind of put that off to the side. Okay. All right. And then the last thing about the why it's important is the communication. It's necessary to help you get those loans or investments in case you need you get money from, from somewhere else. Let me go to the next slide. So when do you do that? When do you do the business plan? You do the business plan before you really get too too started because it helps you develop your ideas you remember you're pulling it out of your head and you're reducing it to paper and it's really and the more you put down it helps you understand a little bit better about what you're trying to do you've got a good idea in your mind but there's so many parts to it so when you're working on that plan in the front yeah it's raw and it's rough i get that we never, and we're never going to try to judge you on it. We're just going to try to help you. Okay. All right. So the next slide is something called the business model canvas. That's what this document is that I've given to you. And for those of you who are, those of you who are not uh, in the room with me, um, there's a business model canvas. If we go to the next slide there, Tim, they can see that I believe it, it looks like this. You should have one of these. Right. Mm -hmm. This business model canvas is a really good tool, guys, to help you take your idea. It's a nine step there. And what you're going to do is look at each section one through nine, and it tells you so write this information down. It tells you number one, which one of your customer problems are you solving? First of all, you got to know who your customers are, right? You got to figure out who your customers are. I mean, that's basic stuff there. And I know everybody thinks everybody's their customer, right? Everybody's my customer. Well, it's not necessary. Everybody ain't your customer. Got it? If I told you I was thirsty and you own a drink company, coffee, and you got water down there, and you got an energy drink or soft drink, am I your customer if I'm thirsty? You say, yeah, right? You say yes or no? If you're so owning a company, you got soft drink, coffee, water, and all this, and you say, yeah, I'm your customer. Well, that's not necessarily true because you didn't ask me what. What you need. That's right. You got to ask me what I need. I need milk. 
None of you have me. You don't have what I want, so I'm going to keep it moving. Got it? Never think that because you have a business that people are just going to rush right in. You know that. You got to find out how to get to that group of people. Where are they? How do I get to them? And how do I keep on coming back? That's in your business plan. That's here. So number one is what problem am I solving? And who am I solving the problem for? So if you're in the trucking industry, whether you're going to have a truck, there's different types of trucks, and I'm not going to try to get into all that part. That may come later on in, in the discussion. But I mean, you might be an over-the-road trucker. You might be a flatbed hauler. You might be a hot shot. You may be a dispatcher, right? You may have different roles and responsibilities, different roles in the trucking industry. I can't tell by just looking at you what you really want to do. I have to drill down into that. But whatever you want to do, you got to figure that part out, and then you gravitate towards the people who have that need. They don't just walk in the door. You got to go to where they are. You got to find out how to get that group. This thing here, this business model canvas is a great tool for helping you do that. So number one is, which one of your customers' problems are you trying to solve? Which needs are you satisfying? So as I told you, I was thirsty. And nobody had what I wanted. Everybody had something different. They had a drink company, but they didn't have what I'm looking for. So I'm not your customer. Unless you can convince me what. If I told you I needed milk, and maybe you own a smooth, you say, you know what? I know milk has got vitamin D in it or something like that. And perhaps the, the vitamin D is what you need. Maybe I can offer you my product to you. So you can convince people to buy what you have too. Sometimes people don't know what they need until it shows up. Two guys in California many years ago needed a taxi cab, guys. They needed a taxi cab and couldn't get one. What came out of that? Uber. Uber was created. You can do this. You can do this. You already know what you want to do, I think. Two guys needed, and they still don't own a taxi, by the way. But they're gazillionaires. They don't own one taxi. But they make sure you and anybody here never been in an Uber or a, or whatever, all those other ones. So we've all taken them at least once, even me. I've got three cars. So find out who needs what you have and you target them. I often ask the question, do you want the Walmart crowd or do you want the Norseman's crowd? Which one do you want? And people typically say they want the what? They want, Walmart. They, want Nordstrom. they want the Nordstrom. You said a Walmart. Mm -hmm. See that? See the differences there? It just depends on. It. Just depends. It depends on what you have to offer. That's exactly right. Because something you see for the Walmart when we can get the Nordstrom. Okay. Right. We limit ourselves. Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. The other thing is we tend to do is undervalue ourselves. Mm -hmm. We think we have to, everything has to be a group on. We got to undercharge because we want to be able to compete. Oh, y'all, y'all, you guys got me all into other marketing and stuff now. I'm on a business plan. But this is part of me understanding. This is part of the research that we do. Building the business plan. Now, this is just data that we collect, that we write down. And there's lots of people who use this as their plan or the guideline to create their business. Collecting this data. So if you know who your customer is, if you figure out who that is, you're on your way. So I'm identifying what problem am I solving? What pain am I solving? Because a business is nothing more than what? It's, it's a solution or resolution to people who have needs or problems or pains. I've got the answer. Let me give you an example. Y'all remember Katrina, right? Yeah. Everybody in the room's old enough. Y'all be 17 years come next month, guys. 17 years since Katrina. Right. Y'all getting old. Just what you know. <laughs> 17 years. But when we were sitting at home watching it on TV, unless you were there, we were watching it on TV, weren't we? Yeah. And we saw the devastation. We saw the, all the fresh, all the stuff that those people were going to, going through. And then we turned the channel to ESPN. See how easy it was for us to transition from what they were going through to turning on our favorite program. 
Well, as I, as I tell my wife, one of them murder shows you watch. We turn the channel. Because as consumers, we're thinking completely different. We just, that's shameful, that's terrible. Those, but those people down there need what? Water. What do they need? Food. Food. Shelter. Shelter. Electricity. Somebody's got to clean that mess up. So watch this. So the trucker or the entrepreneur looks at the same thing I see on TV as a consumer. And they say, oh, my God, I got to get my truck down there and do what? They need water and they need shelter and they need this. and they... So the entrepreneur, you, you see things completely different than the consumer. Who just says, I need, I need, I need. The entrepreneur, the small business owner says, how can I get down there to fix those problems, those pains? How can I be a resource for those folks who need help? That's the way business owners think. That's the way entrepreneurs think. That's the way you will think if you're not already there. How every day, every day, who's next? Where are they? How do I get to them? And how do I keep them coming back? That's my business every day. I wake up looking at my checking account to see if it's a little bit better from last week, last month, or last year. And I'm looking for the next opportunities. Hopefully, when I wake up, I already know what the opportunities are in front of me. If you're waking up every day wondering what you're going to do and who's next, and then you might have some, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Because you've already committed to do this thing called entrepreneurship, small business. Being a trucking company, you committed to this all. You committed your time, your effort, your energy, your money. That 401k that you pulled out of retirement and said, I'm gonna use this money. And, you know, All you're doing is pouring money into the business because you didn't put the plan together. That's why it's important, guys, the plan. So number two says what? For who are we solving the problem of fulfilling the need? Well, yeah, we mentioned those again. Who's that pro? Who are we solving the problem for? It's not everybody. Just remember that. Not everybody. Now, I could go around the room and ask each of you what type of trucking company or business do you want to be in. It may take a while for you to explain that. I think I only have like a few minutes. I don't know how long it's time to tend to get there. But anyway, but number two is what? Recognizing who those customers are. And, and does the value proposition that you offer, what is value proposition? Value proposition is simply this, guys how you, business owners, deliver value to the customers that you're going after. How do I deliver value to the people who have a need? Where do I fit? Where do I fit in? And you may just be in one area. You may just stick to this piece. You may stick to this and say, I'm going to get good at this and get real. Somebody else... People may have several needs, but this is my, that's, what do they say? Stay in your what? Lane. I'm staying in my lane because this is what I'm going to do right here. I'm doing hot shots and that's it. Now, if they need something else, that's over there. But people are going to ask you, oh, well, do you have this? I mean, all of us have been into a store that you have this, you have, oh, we don't have that. We don't care. All right? You all remember Starbucks, right? Mm -hmm. Starbucks sold coffee. Starbucks sold coffee for years and years. I don't know if you drink Starbucks or not, but something they did changed their business model, their value proposition. What they did was they added Wi-Fi in the stores. And so when they added Wi-Fi, what happened? People came and hang out in there. People stayed the whole day. They were coming in pajamas, leaving the pajamas, taking a shower, brushing their teeth and everything. And they were, they're standing. But if you're going to be in there all day or for a standard period of time, is coffee going to be enough? No. So what so what the customers start doing? They're saying, hey, you got any food, food pastry, yeah. soft drinks, tea. And so Starbucks was hearing this stuff. They're going like, we don't have it, but people are sure asking for it. Maybe we want to consider adding that to what? Our portfolio of offer. Mm -hmm. So when their business model canvas, they just start adding stuff. And if enough people are asking you for it. You have to make a decision whether I want to add that to what I do. But there's risk that goes along with that, right? There's, there's a certain amount of risk. You guys remember the when Pepsi tried to make their Pepsi clear? Anybody remember that? When they tried to make it clear? Now, see, so y'all don't remember. You know why? Mm -hmm. They did. They tried it in the market. 
It didn't work. That's why you don't remember it, because it didn't work. Nobody's going to drink a Pepsi that looks like a Sprite or a 7-Up. It just doesn't calculate in my brain, does it? But they had come up with Pepsi Clear. There's other things, too, that you can think about that people try to I mean, all these soft drink trunk, they all come up with these new flavors, and they take out this additive and put this additive in, and people go like, yeah, yeah, oh that's great. Or, or like the Burger King with the Veggie Whopper, or whatever it's called. Yeah. That was a risk they took. Mm -hmm. They had to do a test market. They had to take a risk to say, are people going to want this thing or not? So in your business idea, in your strategy, when you're building your business model canvas, you got to figure out, am I going to stay in my lane? Or am I going to try to be all things to all people? Because there's a risk that comes along with that. Your overhead may go up. The cost to run that may go up. If you're not pulling in enough revenue to cover that, you got some issues. You could have some. So we're trying to figure out all this sort of stuff on the front end. Number three says what? Do which channels to our customers, do our customer segments want to be reached? How do we connect with the people we're trying to reach as a business owner? How do we get to them? How about you? How are you going to reach your folks? Any idea yet? Uh, through internet, load boards, stuff like that. Okay. Brokers. Okay, brokers, load boards, that sort of stuff. Okay, gotcha. So he got in his mind, I want to do this, and I don't know what kind of business it is. I only know it's trucking. That's what I know. But I don't, you know, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of different type of trucks. Does everybody here know their NAICS codes? I don't know what the NAICS codes are. Okay, good. So if you don't know what your NAICS codes are, write this down. N-A-I-C-S dot com. You go to that website. You put up in the search box what type of trucking company you are. It'll pull up your codes. That's where you make your money, guys. Nobody cares about your name. They want to know what kind of business you can do. So if I see your next code and I recognize it, I know what kind of business you are. If I saw your name of your business, I wouldn't know. Joe's Trucking Company. What does that mean to me? Mm -hmm. But if I see those codes, the codes are going to tell me what type of business you are. NAICS.com, guys, when you get a chance, you make sure you go to that site, look those up, because you want to know what your codes are. Especially if you want to do business with the government. Mm -hmm. That's what they go by. They go by those codes. All right. Number four, how will we get, keep, and grow customers? Again, that's part of the marketing. That's in your marketing piece in the business plan. Mm -hmm. How do we get those folks? Knowing where they go, knowing what their habits are, what the demographics look like. What do they, what that, what does that group look like that I'm trying to go after? What does your customer look like, sir? No? I don't have any customers. Okay, good. <laughs> but you want to get your business started, right? So you got an idea. Have you looked beyond just the idea that you're saying, I want to be this type of trucking company? Have you determined that yet? Hot shotting. Hot shotting, yeah. okay. So who who are typical hotshot customers? What does that mean? You don't know yet. No. Okay, good. That's fine. That's fair enough. Fair enough. I'm just asking because that's part of the that's picking up another piece. Got it? Another piece of the puzzle. If I'm gonna do this, I got I got to do a little more research to find out because I've got to know where those customers are. So I'm not spinning my wheel over here. <coughs> yes, ma'am. I mean, if we're here to learn um, how to start the business, mm -hmm. what would you start? Like, if you were us, what would you advise us to start in terms of defining which segment of truck, trucking would be, you know, how, I mean, to evaluate which, which type you know, of trucking? Yeah, which, which type, segment? Which segment? Of yeah, you know, because there's so truck. many, and it's like, okay, which one? How would you make that evaluation if you were us? That's a good question. She's asking. If you want to go into this business because trucking is a broad topic, which one would you go into? Right? Yeah. I mean, he's hot shot. You're what? Over the road. Over the road. Say. Okay, well, my son's hot shot. What about you guys? We call aggregates. Aggregate. Okay, aggregate. So these are all different types. Now you're asking me to define for you which one you want to do. I don't know. This is I I'm told sure you sure. earlier, this is what? Mm -hmm. This is your baby. Mm -hmm. 
This is your baby. You, you're going to redo the research. We'll help you. Don't get it wrong. We'll, we'll help you. But I don't, I'm not going to make the decision for you. I need you to do that. I need you to figure out where you're going to put your time, energy, efforts, and resources into. But you probably find out where you don't want to go long before you find out where you do want to go. Right. See, being a, I mean, dispatching is a trucking company, as far as I'm concerned, being a dispatcher. Right. That's part of that element. So I may tell you, hey, you may want to be a dispatcher. Just find gigs for other people who need mm -hmm. to move around. That's all I do. I just hand out the slides so you can turn to the canvas if you just want to follow. Yep. Okay. Oh, oh, great. Thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, so when we're sitting down and consulting with you, counseling you as mentors, uh, we we work through these things. But the first thing we're going to ask you is what you're good at. What are you good at? Where's your, where's your strength lies, especially if it's in this arena? Remember, trucking is just one piece of transportation. Transportation is like, whoa. I'm in the transportation industry. What in the world does that mean? But you narrowed it down to the trucking industry, right? But now you got to further narrow that down to see how, which one you want. Because and I can tell you, I think everybody in here has a different thought of what they want to do for whatever reason it is. We might be able to help you define it, but I'm not, we can't tell you what you need to do. Well, my question is, mm -hmm. where do you start with the research? That's really kind of um because there's so many different um like lanes and you were saying you know, mm -hmm. earlier. Um and then I guess that's where I'm really trying to pinpoint because that's okay. So let me do this. Okay. Let me let me get through this. Mm -hmm. We'll take some QA okay. until the next person comes up. Okay. The better thing is even this. Are you a are you a score client? I have signed up, but still waiting for Okay. Uh, Whenever you get with that school mentor, then you're going to be with us face to face or however we do it. And now we're going to start really picking each other's brands. Okay. I'm going to bring to you, hopefully, it's a, it's a trucking person. Okay. But we're going to pick your brain, <laughs> help you develop that sort of stuff. But you're asking the right question. You're asking the right. See, you're doing the research by asking the question. You're picking stuff up. So these guys that I told you about, <clears throat> score mentors, I work for an organization called the VBOC, the Veterans Business Outreach Center. I work strictly with veterans on entrepreneurs getting their business started. That's They work with everybody. I work with everybody with them. But in this arena, I only work with the veteran community right here. Doing the same thing I'm doing now, targeting veterans. But it's the same needs, whether you're a veteran or not, same needs. There may be some things that are different for a veteran that regular people have from some incentives, perhaps. I don't, I don't want to claim that out front, but the fact of the matter is get with us, get with that mentor. Let's figure out where, which direction you want to go. But we got to start doing the research. So things like Google, I mean, trade organizations, you know, trucking trade organizations, finding out where they are, how you can connect with them, learning more about how they impact that industry. And see if you can carve out a little piece of that. Okay. They talk to Facebook groups. Okay. Yeah, there's um here in DFW and around the country, there's something called meetups. Meetups. M -E -M -E -T, meetups. Mm -hmm. Meetups. Those are business groups mm -hmm. that get together in a particular industry. So if you go to meetup.com and say and put up in the search box trucking company. You'll see how many there are around here. They, and they meet and they all get together in a room like this. They have lunch, they have breakfast, and we're sharing with each other. Got it? Chambers. Chamber memberships. Chamber memberships are, are helpful. Leads groups are helpful. These are where people go, you know, the lead group of the four of us, and we're just giving each other leads. This is my nucleus right here, and all we do is feed each other business. Mm -hmm. I'm feeding for yours, you're feeding for mine. I'm mm -hmm. feeding for yours, you're feeding for mine. And we, so we, we can set up networks like that, or like on Facebook. Next door, another one. Yeah, mm -hmm. Some of you belong to next door, probably, in the communities. Those are community organizations. Then networking. You can never outdo networking. Networking. Absolutely. Getting in a room with people that do what you do. Remember, 
I may not have all the answers, even though I'm a trucker, but he has some that I don't have. So she needs help. I don't have the answer. So I call him. We get the client what they need, and we both make what? We both. We dead presidents. That's what we're looking for, right? In the chain account. 50% of something is better than what? 100% of nothing. <laughs> Copy? Yes. I'm just telling you. Too many times we get our arms around, so I got mine, you got to go get yours. Well, you know, come on, man. Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose a deal because I don't have a big enough truck or a truck that can go far enough to get that load that needs to go from here to Cali because I just got a box truck. Mm -hmm. But I know a guy. I know a guy. And if I subcontract, is that the word? Yes. Yeah. So we both get what we want, and the client absolutely gets what they want. Okay, y'all get me on track here. Because I see I'll get into this stuff. I'll be going. I'm just gonna tell you now. Where am I? <laughs> Number four. So how do we get keep and grow customers? I love doing this stuff. Y'all understand. <laughs> I do this every day. I love doing this. How do we get those customers? How do we keep? I ask myself every day, who's next? Where are they? how do I get to them? How do I keep them coming back? Everybody in here, anybody in here bought a new car? Okay, well, let's just say if you buy a new car or even a used car, mm -hmm. probably with a new car, though, they know when that car is going to be paid off mm -hmm. at five years. What's happening in year number four? They're calling you up. Hey, what's your name? David. Dave. Dave, we know you bought that Ultimate from us in 2017. You know, it should be paid off this year, Dave. What, you got some new ones on the lot for you? Da, 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 da. Yeah. So they already know because they've got your history. They're making it for our free. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do we get them? We keep going back to the well, don't we? Mm -hmm. The average house, the average house in America has been resold by the same realtor five times. Yeah. Okay. So the realtor knows who lives there. We don't stay in. I mean, anybody here been in the same house for the last 30 years? No, we've moved around. Mm -hmm. And those realtors sometimes come right back saying, hey, you need the next house, I can get it to you. I'm going to sell your house and then find your house. They just keep going. So you're going to do what with your customer? Mm -hmm. You keep going back to the well. Mm -hmm. Keep drinking. And what sets you apart, ladies and gentlemen, from the next guy, in most cases, is your level of service. Mm -hmm. Is your level of service. Now, y'all are in a business where service is paramount. Because mm -hmm. if I've got some goods that need to be moved, and you make a promise to me, you're going to deliver this in three days to South Kaki Lackey or wherever it's got to go, I'm depending on you to get it there. Mm -hmm. Because somebody on the other end needs that. And you keep doing that. That's your level of service. Irrespective. Mm -hmm. I mean, price is important to many of us because it's what we can afford or what we don't. I mean, but nobody in here drives the same car. We all drive what we drive. Why? Why do we drive what we drive? Because it's what we wanted and what we could afford. Mm -hmm. Hmm? What we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We live at the level of our income, ladies and gentlemen. We live at the level of our income. That's where we hover every day. So if you want to move up to this level, you got to go where people at this level live, don't you? You got to go where they are. I mean, J.B. Hunt is a trucking company, is it not? Can, can you compete with J.B. Hunt? <laughs> can you compete with J.B. Hunt? Maybe not you. But J.B. Hunt may have a need that they can't do that you can because of your availability and you've proven yourself. So hey, nothing wrong with calling them say, hey, you need this, I'm here. I'm in DFW, I'm here. You need this, you need a load to go this for this far, I'm ready right now. Here's my track record. So sometimes your customers are other companies, what we call competitors. It's not always the individual. It can be somebody who does what we do, 
who says, I'll help you. So think about that. So that's number four there. How are we get keep and grow customers? Customers, sometimes they're the end you. I'll ask you this question. You got kids in the track. You know? <laughs> got, got more time today. Okay, good. So, so watch this. What kind of vehicle you What kind of car you got? Infinity. Okay, you got an infinity. So you are the customer of Infinity Manufacturer. Is that right? Is she the customer of Infinity? Is she? Who's she really the customer of, guys? Think about it. The dealership. Who? The dealership. The dealership. Who's the customer of Infinity? The dealership, the dealership is. See how it gets back to knowing who your customer is? Mm -hmm. You could be barking up the wrong tree thinking, I'm, I'm trying to get my stuff over here, but that's not really who I'm selling to. If you've got kids in daycare, who is the customer? Here's an easy one. Who's the customer if they're, you have kids in daycare? The parents. the parents. The little people don't have any money. They're the end users. They're the ones that benefit from mom and grandma and all of them. They pay for it. So you got to know who's writing the check. Who's writing that check? That's what I'm focusing on right there. When products are sold at Walmart or, or on, on the shelf, does the manufacturer of whatever is on that shelf, do they know you? No. They know who? Walmart. That's their customer. It's up to Walmart to get it down to the person who needs it. I'm selling to Walmart. Well, I'm selling to whoever. The other part of this, guys, number four, Knowing how to get to those people. That's where that networking comes in value right there. Now, I know the squeaky wheel gets the grease. That's what they say. But if I look up every time and here you are, every time I'm looking and, I, and something comes up in my mind and I'm saying, you know, I remember, what's your name? Magda. I remember Magda came over here like 40 times talking about her company and, you know, I'm going to give her a shot this time. Mm -hmm. Because you just keep calling. I'm telling you guys, this is no time to be shy if you're going to be in business. Is there anybody here not a salesperson? Okay. Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. Salesperson. Good answer. Because if you're not a salesperson, you'll be eating ramen noodles. You know what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. I like ramen noodles, but I only eat them because I want to eat them, not because I want. I have to eat them. You gotta know who those folks are. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna keep moving because I didn't talk about this stuff. Number five, let's go here. What key activities do your value propositions require? So think about your business, the trucking company that you think you want to have. What are those things that I need to make sure are in that box of to do or capabilities? What's in that box of my capabilities is that when a customer calls me or a client or a patient, I built a relationship that I can deliver. What's in that box? Because it gets them back again to if I need something, Magda, and you don't have it, I'm either going to do what? I'm going to say, well, thank you. And I'm going right on down here to who? What's your name? Yeah. Eric? Yeah. Henry. Okay. I'm going down to Henry. Appreciate you. Nice meeting you. <laughs> but just... $2 million contract, and I've seen it happen, my friends. You lose out because you're not ready. Again, if, if you're staying in your lane, I get that. So don't hate the player, hate the game. If he gets it, that's fine. But you know, I, I, if I know he doesn't, I'm calling him on the phone. Hey, I got a contract possibility. You want to work on this? See what I'm saying? I'm telling you guys, work with each other. I'm a financial planner by trade. That's my business. I've been doing it a long time in Dallas Fort Worth. We got seven point something million people in DFW, okay? Over seven million. I've been around a lot. I do a lot of stuff in groups and meetings and things like that in my business. I meet a lot of people that I've seen over the years that do what I do. I know a lot of them. They know me. But I can always tell the new guy in the business. Oh, Mr. Plum, I've heard about you. Blah, 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 blah. My name is so-and-so. I heard about you. He said, you know, I'm your competitor. I said, D, you are not my competitor. 
I said, there's 7 million people in Dallas, Fort Worth. I just need 100 families a year. I'll be fine. You can have the other 6,999,000 if you want. You know, I'm not competitive. Guys, there's, a, there's enough to go around. It's, would you agree? No, death is my competitor because I can't help anybody when you're dead. <laughs> Let's look at it like this. Don't be afraid because you're in business and you're in business. What do you do, sir? What's your name again? Uh, Ray Fox. Okay. I'm on the finance side. Gotcha. Okay, got it. So, so Ray knows what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people here. Watch this, guys. If you're in a trucking business, there's enough to go around. There really is. How do I know? What's across the street from the CBS? Walgreens. Go figure. Go figure. Walgreens move right across the street. Do you think they said, well, I ain't moving over there because CBS has got this corner. They got no. <laughs> no. Competition is what? Good. It's foundational. Mm -hmm. Walgreens put, think about it. If you think in your mind, if there's the Tarzan around, there's a Wally World somewhere around. Walmart, right? Mm -hmm. Sam's Club, Costco. Different neighborhoods. Gas stations on every corner, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's enough to go around. You just got to figure out how to get to those people. Okay, that's number one. What key activity? Make sure in your toolkit, in your toolkit, you have in there what you want in the toolkit. It may take you a moment to get there. It may take you a moment to get there. In other words, you may start out just doing certain things because that's all your budget will allow you to do. But when you start looking at others and saying, here's what I need to do perhaps because I need to broaden my scope. Just like Sam's, I mean, uh, Starbucks did. They sold coffee. But when they added that Wi-Fi, like she was saying, People needed sandwiches, pastry, and tea, smoothies. They got all of it. They even have music in Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They sell merchandise. Do you think that affects their bottom line when they start raising up all that? They, they start selling that stuff. Now, remember, there's a certain amount of risk that goes along with it. You have to measure the risk to see if it's going to work. If it's not going to work, you pull it out. That's why they have a sale. Why they have a sale? Get rid of it. I'm getting rid of this inventory, but nobody's buying it. Okay, number six. What key resources, suppliers, etc., do our value propositions require? Okay, very good. So we talk about in the hierarchy of developing our business concept, our business concept, because that's what you have right now. You have a concept, and I, you have an idea. Or what I call a dollar in a dream. I just got this idea. I want to open up a trucking company. I don't know nothing about trucking company, but somebody help me out, please. We can help. I already told you it's a puzzle, lots of pieces. You're just picking up what you know because you're going to Google some stuff. You're going to use Yahoo. Wait a minute, wait a minute. YouTube has everything. <laughs> Done. Everything. YouTube has everything. Little. But I told you, trade magazine. Groups, where do they go? Where do they hang? What can I belong to? How can I network? This is you doing your research to pull it together to make sure that what? What resources do I need? Does our value proposition require the things you need to do? That's what's in there. That's what you're going to put in your toolkit. We've got resource, we got research tools, guys, that we have available to us. And, and let me say this to you real quickly. There's a guy downtown Arlington or where you at? Where you at? Euless. There's a guy in Euless. There's one in Arlington. Mansfield. Fort, Fort Party Word. Grand Prairie. Grand Prairie. Wherever your community is, your city is, there's a person in that town who will teach you exactly what I'm going to teach you or what we're teaching you, but they're going to say, make that check out too. Mm -hmm. What's that credit card number? Mm -hmm. Some of you spent money on stuff, have you not? Mm -hmm. Perhaps, maybe you have. But there's a person out in your community that will do exactly what I'm, I'm teaching you or want to teach you or mentor you for. 
But guess what we don't ask for? Got that? Now, if you need an attorney, that's different. If you need a CPA, that's different. But if you need somebody to get in the boat with you to just help me navigate this thing called entrepreneurship, how many school mentors we have at Fort Worth? Close to 100, about 80. Dallas probably has about 400. SBDC, small business development. We've got at least 800 to 1,000 business advisors and mentors right in DFW, y'all, right in DFW and surrounding community that will help you for the what word? Come on. Now, see, if I was in a room full of military, they'd be grinning and everything. Because military people like the military discount. I get that. <laughs> like the military discount. No. We wired that way, y'all. Because you had around the military. I'm just sorry. We wired that way. But I'm telling you right now, it doesn't cost you anything to get down, get down with us and get into that to that relationship. Yeah, you're gonna need to pay for some things. But like I said, some people have a business that requires DNL. But then in the mentoring and the counseling and all that, guys, you don't have to write that that check unless you want to. I've got tools that I can pull up to help you on marketing. Boom. I can help you on with some studies. Boom. I can pull them up because I have paid the price for the tool. The research. I just give it to you. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. You pay, you spend three or four thousand dollars in some cases and get some of the research that we can give to provide to you for the what word again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm -hmm. I want you to know this. I want you to know that. Okay. A couple of other things in my mind floating around, but I'm gonna keep it moving. All right. I was at six, right? Let's go to seven. Who are our key partners? What does that mean to you? Who are our key partners? Okay. Okay. Strategic partners. Okay. Good. Good. Those people I need to keep where? My hip pocket. People I can call on when I we call it. Can I use this? Oh, this, this isn't going to show up on the screen, guys. Sorry about that, but it will show up in the room. This is okay. This is not permanent, is it? Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to tell you about the... Okay. 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 Yeah, I'll carry my own stuff with me. You know why? That's okay. Never mind. Anyway, that's, that's okay. That's okay. There you go. That's, that's, something. that's something. There you go. This whole thing permanent. <laughs> Here's the team that we talk about having at your beck and call. This is your bail team, guys. These are some of those key folks that we were talking about. Who, this is an acronym, by the way. Who can tell me what the B stands for? There's a prize if you get it right. I don't know what the prize is. I don't know. <laughs> Who do you think the B is? Bye. Ah, thank you. Very good. She gets a prize. I don't know what it is. <laughs> There's a banker in there. Right. Okay. So you want to pay it up. Who do you think the A is? Accountant. Yeah. The accountant. Thank you. Very good. Who's this person? You're going to meet one today, huh? Insurance guy, yeah. Okay. And then who do you think that L is? Lawyer. There you go. Legal. There's your legal team right there. Okay. So <laughs> clear as mud, right? So we got that down. My, I have some markers, but that's what I'm going to take with you. These are folks, again, this is your hip hop. I'm not saying you got to retain them and pay them all kinds of tons of money, but if I need one of these folks, I know how to get you one. Now, if you're going to get a lawyer, you got a business. Mm -hmm. Don't get a divorce lawyer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would you get a, if you have to need a brain surgeon, would you get a toe doctor or something like that? No. You get somebody that, <laughs> oh, look at you, boy. You're going to get a, you're going to get a, a, a person that's, thank you, that's okay. Don't worry about it. 
That's good enough. That's good. You're going to get the, the right type of attorney. Banks. Consider your community banks. Yeah. I know y'all all, all want to run over to the big boxes, Bank of America, Chase, and all that. When you're a startup business guy, don't tell them I told you this. Yeah. You go to the bank and say, how much money are you going to need? Any idea? Who needs money? Who needs money? 100000 100000 OK. You're going to need 100000 So you walk into the bank. You go to Bank of America and go, I got this business plan. And I, I need a hundred thousand for my business. You walk in all, you gonna walk in all suited up. I know how it's gonna work. You had your best Sunday suit on and everything. Walking in there all clean. The bank is gonna be sitting behind the desk. You are gonna say, I'm first thing that bank. You gonna say, I need a hundred thousand dollars to get my business started. And what's in that banker's mind? What is in his mind when you ask for that money for your business? What's in their mind? <laughs> all they want to know is what? I'm gonna get my money back. How are you gonna pay me back? That's what they're thinking. <laughs> you walk in saying you need money for your business. Okay, how are you going to pay me back? I'm glad you asked. Here's my. See that? Here's my. Yeah. When you're fresh out of the box, brand new startup, you need, that plan. you need that plan. Because that plan is your representation of who, what, when, how, whoever else is going to be on the team. That's how we're going to get it done. Got it? How are you going to pay me back? That's all I care about. I don't want your business. I don't want your truck. All I want you to do is what? Pay me back. Each month, I'm going to tell you the terms and conditions. It's going to be 6% over the next 25 years at this interest rate, right? Here's your monthly payment. That's terms and conditions. All you got to do is every month, make sure that they're getting paid. And they're going on to the next day. They don't, they're not getting your business. They're not in your business. They got plenty of other people that they want to help too. Now, but for you, Mr. Business Owner, you're coming in fresh out of the box. Still wet behind the ears and you go over to Bank of America and they say, well, you know what? I don't want to speak for Bank of America. That's not right. Just because I work there for a number of years, I'm just saying. The fact of the matter is, you're not who they're looking for. Oh, now, if you came in asking for a million, we could talk, perhaps. But you better have some strong what with you. Uh-huh. What else? Yeah, uh-huh, that's right. And what else? Yeah, that's that's correct. We call it the five C. You said three of them. You said credit, collateral, cash. There's two more. Anybody know? Character. Yeah, that's part of your character too, isn't it? Absolutely. Your credit. That credit is important. Everybody in this room knows their credit score, don't you? You know, you better know. We often say, Tim, we get a lot of good ideas from people. A lot of good ideas. And guess what they are? Broke with bad credit. Broke with bad credit, but they got great ideas. So let's get back to the big box banks, Chase. Uh, you know, Wells Fargo might do something, but I'm just saying, again, I'm not trying to disparage these big banks, but startup businesses are not their strong suit. So here's how they get around. Here's what they do. They take pots of money and say, we'll give it to Community Development Corporation, CDCs, and CDFIs. Nonprofit men. Are you going to talk about that? Am I getting people off the sun? Okay, let me just stop. And by the way, they give money to these folks so that they can turn and give it to you. Is that right? Yes. Okay, good. See, we agree. Well, I'm going to stay in my way about it. I'm telling y'all, I, I love doing this stuff, so. I have an eight module program that I teach on entrepreneurship. So I've been in like, I've already counted like five of them out there, just been talking about the business plan. So who are our key partners? We said, what? Well, these are some of our key partners. And by the way, SCORE, BBOC if you're a veteran, SBDCs, Women Business Centers, 
all local, close to a thousand advisors right here in DFW. Crowded, East Texas, Longview, we're out there too. Weatherford, Abilene, I cover all of those places. Heck, I'm all the way up in Oklahoma and Arkansas. That's my coverage area. Just saying, but we are people that will help you. That's what we're here to do. Now, score are the business plan gurus. But even when you want to get that loan from, from your bank and you walk in with that business plan, I'm going to tell you how it looks. Remember I told you how they do? They say, well, you know, you know how are you going to pay me back? Your, your business plan may be 30 pages long, but you know what they're going to do, guys? This is important. They're going to look at page one where the executive summary is that tells me all about you. And then they're going to jump over to page number 15. Anybody know what's on, what starts on page 15 or thereabouts? Financials. The financials. That tells the story mm -hmm. of how you see yourself in three years. In three years from the day. Because if you're going to pay me back, I got to see how you're going to get that money. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. Look. Am I getting into the part? Oh, keep getting into the wrong. But anyway, anyway, let me keep going. I'm getting to the wrong section here. But that's in the business plan, by the way. That's the financial. You probably won't talk about that. Number eight. What is the revenue model? What are the pricing tactics? And for what value are our customers willing to pay? I'm gonna start with that last one right there. For what value are our willing our customers willing to pay? Now you have to figure out. A price point. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Price point, a competitive price point. That's a price that people are willing to give you their hard, hard earned dollars to do what you need to do for them. Mm -hmm. Got it? You figure it out, and how do you do that? Some more research. That's picking up some more. What are the industry standards? What's what the average person? Who else am I looking at when I'm trying to figure out how to charge my price? Who else am I looking at? Competition. Yes. The competitors. What are they doing? You think CBS isn't walking across the street to Walgreens to see what's going on in there? And vice versa? Absolutely. Yeah. Walmart is doing it to Target. Target's doing it to Walmart, maybe. Just saying. You do it to each other. You got to come up with a competitive price. So if you want the Walmart crowd, as you said, and I'm a Norsom's guy, what is my perception of the Walmart business owner? <laughs> See what I'm saying? What is my perception of the Walmart person if I'm the Norsom's person? I mean, there's a reason, guys. If you know this area, there's a reason why those people in Colleyville and South Lake and you know some of them communities where they are, <laughs> where they live, why they drive what they drive and live where they live because they have the ability to do what? I mean, you can go up to Colleyville, there ain't no Walmart in Colleyville, did you know that? <laughs> There's no Walmarts in Colleyville. Check it out. <laughs> or South Lake. Why? <laughs> Because the perception is perception what? Perception is what? It's yeah. Reality. <laughs> so if you price point yourself and you price point yourself too low in South Lake or Colleyville, they're going to think you what? You see that? That's exactly right. So be competitive. Now, on the other side of that, there's a point where I'll pay, what are people willing to pay? I'll pay $10, but you know, you start getting up to 12 and 15 bucks, I'm going over here now. Well, I'm going over there now. Because you priced yourself where? That's all in here. It's all in here, guys. Because we want to know how you're thinking. That's why the business plan just tells us who it's just your representation of who you are, is all it is. And, and matter of fact, 
I don't even think we do uh, paper copies as much anymore. How do we deliver um, business plans? Because a lot of people got to look at it. You know how we do it? Google Docs, Dropbox, names you may or may not be familiar with, better get familiar with them. Because if I'm going to give you access to my business plan, if you're my banker or my proposed banker, it's eight other people got to look at it. I don't have time to be printing out eight copies of my business plan to give them like in the old days we did. <laughs> hmm? Okay, yes, that's correct. So think of the digital world too. Of me creating my business plan in a format where I can give somebody access who I want to have access to be able to look at. You know, you can't share your candy with everybody. Right? Anybody in here ever had the idea taken? I mean, you ever, you ever come up with an idea and you forgot about it, and then two years later you see it on TV? And you go, hey, wait a minute, that's my idea. All the time, actually. Never happened? Yeah. See, the only difference between them and you is what they did what? Executed. That's correct. They took the step, did something about it. You just. <laughs> You just forgot about it. Hey, that's what happened. Afternoon. That's the difference. Well, it almost is. <laughs> so if we want to, if we want to make this thing happen, guys, as you do, I would say the first step for some of you is start doing some research about the type of business you want to be in, the business model that you want to have. Your value proposition back down there again in number eight, revenue model. Okay, what are your customers willing to pay? So, what are your pricing tactics? Being competitive, looking at what the other what the others are doing, looking at the industry. Now, now get this right now. Make sure that I'll give you a good example. I we've got three cars, right? I own a Nissan Altima that I drive a lot. When I bought my first Mercedes. I noticed this. And when I went to the Mercedes dealership, it was a different world over there. Even the coffee tastes better. You know? <laughs> Not only drink coffee. <laughs> Why is that? Because their perception is what? If you're buying the best or nothing, when you walk into that facility or that establishment, what? You're going to be treated. The, the way they expect that someone like you should be treated. That's why I tell you your service, guys, is what sets you apart in many cases, your level of service. Mm -hmm. I've never had an event at the doggone dealership where they invite all the owners in to come in and they got caviar and drip, drip. They ain't doing that over at Nissan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they do, they charge me for it. You've all been in a restaurant. Watch this. We got some really nice restaurants in DFW. You know, let's pick out a good steak restaurant in your own mind. Mm -hmm. If you're in a steak restaurant, this is somebody's business. Remember, I told you level of service. If you're eating a good meal, a good meal, what happens eventually if you're eating a good meal in the restaurant? What's going to happen eventually? <laughs> yeah, you get both. Give long before you give the tip or long before you get full, what happens in that good restaurant? Who comes around? Not a waitress. Who? The manager. Or the chef. Exactly right. Miss Marga, how was your meal? Was everything okay? Was the temperature right? That is, how does that make you feel? Yeah. Not nah. well, you okay with that? Okay, we'll try to do better next time. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> I know y'all had some bad experiences in some restaurant. Well, no matter, no matter where you go, you've had some bad ones. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to tell you in your company, mm -hmm. sometimes it's how you treat your customer. It's your level of service more than the price. Mm -hmm. well, in my business, I don't even talk how much it's going to cost you for this policy. I'm talking about, am I delivering value to you? Are you getting what you want? Does this satisfy you? If I can check all those boxes and some more, 
What is likely going to happen if she gets what she wants or you get what you want? What's more likely to happen if the person is getting what they want from you and, and your company? What are they going to do? They're going to come back, and what else are they going to do? That's what I'm talking about. This isn't something you hope. This isn't a may. It's called a referral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the review. You, you guys do reviews all the time online, all the time, don't you? Say, take this, sir. Take this on the phone, on your internet. That's why you wonder why they, that's why you wonder why when you say you want to go to Hawaii and you just turn on your computer and they go, how do they know? What's going on? And that's happened to all of us. <laughs> I was just thinking about that, you know? Because we tell them everything about us on the top on computer anyway. <laughs> but I'm asking people for a survey. I want a review. I want to know how I can do it better. What would make my service and my company better the next time for you? What can I do better the next time, Mr. Smith? Those are simple ass, guys. I know it sounds tacky, but it's corny, but it's simple ass. Because people remember that you really care. What's that saying they have? Nobody cares that you remember unless they remember that you care. That's you. Okay, where am I? At? What's the revenue model look like? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna keep this simple. We like to get paid in dollars, don't we? Unless you sell for the bus. The revenue model for me is if I just deliver something good, I expect remuneration of some sort. I, I expect that um, what I do is going to reward me and my employees enough that you'll come back. Um, sometimes we can trade, especially in your line of work, you can trade. You can trade. You can, what we call it bartering, right? Services rendered. You do this for me, I'll do this for you. And it evens out, evens out on your balance sheet, even as a matter of fact, on your balance sheet, it looks like that. That's enough of that you're to balance sheet. Balance. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. Um, revenue models, how, how, do I, how do I get satisfied from doing what I do for you? There's some other elements going to it, but I'm going to just leave it right there. All right, now, number nine. This is the last one. We're the most important cost in our business model. So now think about your businesses as trucking companies or prospective trucking companies. Who's going to own trucks? Okay, you got to buy the truck or lease the truck. <clears throat> you got to figure out which way. You got to figure out which way works for you. And there are people around that will help you decide that. There's somebody who will help you decide whether you should buy or lease. Okay. Anybody gonna need a building? Okay, no building, just, just trucks. But operate out of your homes, perhaps? Anybody gonna have an office space? Okay. Because you know, you can get these executive office spaces where we share. So one person answers the phone for like 10 different businesses. We can share in that, right? Cuts down on the what? Yeah, absolutely. We're trying to find out ways what goes into a cost model. Mm -hmm. um, I think somebody's coming in after me to talk about insurance and fuel costs and all those sorts. Of so I'll, I'll just gloss over that. What are the big things in your? What are the big costs in your business? Whatever it is, now, you know, if you got a truck, it's gonna be, what's going to be the big thing? The fuel cost, the fuel ratings, maintenance, absolutely. Insurance is big, but there's a guy coming to talk about this. So mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. Any questions? Sir? What kind of business do you have? You mean financial plan? Oh, okay. So <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Came out of the banking and insurance world. I'm still in it. My own business, but in my day job, I work. Travel. I, 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 I travel around quite a bit teaching workshops on entrepreneurship. How long have you been? Uh, it's 2004. Mm -hmm. the, the, going around teaching stuff? Yeah, it was 2004 when I started working for the Small Business Development Center. When I was with the bank, 
I did it. I used to go out here. I told you I was military. See, when I got out in 97, it was pretty much go, go to TCU or SMU, go to school, get a job at wherever. The gate's that way. Thank you for your service. That was it. That was it, guys. Get a job or go to school. And that's the way they drew it. Mm -hmm. Because for 24 years, I was thinking and acting like a soldier. That's what they wanted me thinking like. And I didn't have that. That's what they wanted me to think. So when I was ready to come out of the gate, like many of us, we're going like, okay, got to get out here now and get a job. We got to go to school, provide for our family because all that military stuff cut off now. But for the guy who wanted to be an entrepreneur, a small business owner, I, they didn't have a program like that for us, which is what I am. I'm that program for people getting out of the military that says, I want to start a business, where do I go? You come to me, eventually I'm going to send you to him, and the other people around the DFW, or the ones in Oklahoma, the ones in Arkansas. Thousands of people I know that charge you how much? Yeah. So that's, but I started when the bank picked me up to run, learn how to manage the bank. That's when I learned all the business stuff. And I'm going, like, man, if we don't, if GIs only knew some of this, because we don't know this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started going back on JRB here and setting up in the library, teaching. Uh, I created my own class in my community, just from my experience at running the bank. Because the bank is your, that's your business. You expect me to bring in whatever you need, make money for the bank, and they pay you. And so I was doing that on the military base. And then when this program started, I was ideally suited for it. Ideally, because I've been already doing it. And so I've worked with SCORE. I'm still there. I've worked for the Small Business Development Center. I've worked here 12 years. I've been here since 2016. So I live in the entrepreneurial world every day. And my wife, when we go out, she said, do you ever stop this? Do you ever turn this off? I said, honey, that's how we live where we live. Drive what we drive. And we go to Myrtle Beach when we get ready. <laughs> Which I just came back from two weeks ago. <laughs> I'm just saying. You're going to get there too. Nobody's going to talk to you yet, I don't think, <clears throat> about your exit strategy. That's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. What I do when I don't want to do this any longer, because I'm there, practically. Uh, Sir? Yeah, you might have already said it. I apologize. But uh, how do we get a hold of y'all? Uh, yeah. yeah, he's going to cover all that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, this class is put on by school. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I meant that we, we got this old Tarrant County covered, man. And, Summer West and Johnson County too. We got some of that up there. <clears throat> so do we have any other questions? Any other questions? Here we have uh, the business established. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been in business, she's the owner of the business, and she's been in business for 20 years. Nice. Uh, ah. But we need some help because I feel like we reached our gap okay. where we need some mentorship and financial advisors. Is there a way that we can get that also to school? Mm -hmm. Where they can visit our business, look at our balance sheets and tell us where we need to focus and just I feel mm -hmm. like we reached the gap and I'm a bookkeeper and administrative but I feel like my uh, knowledge is limited I, I would like to get more abroad okay do you do you have one of these yes we have all of them okay. mm -hmm. after 20 years no. ups and downs. I was gonna say you made some mistakes along the way yeah. you're still picking up pieces though aren't you since yes. after 20 years she's saying we need some more pieces to pick up. Yeah. That's why I told you, you never stop, guys. You can, the puzzle never completely gets full. There's always a gap in there somewhere because there's always something to learn. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you this, too. Get real good at what you're doing. Somebody's going to come after you. Oh. See what's happening with Twitter and all those sorts of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Think about these companies that are. Think about these companies that are. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll stop with this. There are some companies that gets so good that somebody comes along and goes, we're going to suck you up, or we want to take you over, hostile takeover. Mm -hmm. There are some companies that don't keep up, like Circuit City, like Toys R Us. Radio Shop, Toys R Us, right? Kmart, because things change. Yes. You don't change, yes. you're going to be blockbuster. Y'all yes. know what blockbuster means, and I never even tell you. I coined that word. But yeah. you know what being blockbuster means, don't you? Yeah, I ran over. He won't be around. You yeah. think you're the big dog, IBM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't even talk about them that much anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Polaroid, 
Kodak, names that I grew up, iconic names. Yeah, well, they're still here, but they're not the big dogs. They're not the big dogs any longer. You didn't like his losses. Mm -hmm. Netscape Navigator. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Stuff changes, guys. And if you don't stay on top of your game, yeah. you're going to be black. Blockbuster, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you. One second. Where's the rest? What you said you got to go. Yeah. It's, it's there. <laughs> I didn't want to record it on here. So, the restroom, let's take a break for like 10 minutes. The restroom's already outside the door. <laughs> there are a set downstairs and there's a set here in the hall. Okay. Everybody there's coffee leave. over there. Tell mama leave somebody. Okay. Great. Be sure and drink plenty of coffee because the next thing up is insurance. <laughs> I don't want anybody not <laughs> off. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, great. Oh, okay. Ray, man, I was just all in your way. That was all in the wheelhouse. I, I didn't know it was you. I'd never met him before. We talked on the phone. Yeah, yeah, time. exactly. <laughs> I see that my girl's gone. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. was was uh, I copied those slides for them. So I'll look it up. I copy the old slide for them, this class. Well, I'll put the other one up. In the room, I'll get the computer.
Okay, this one we have to share only copy seven because we only have seven registered. Uh, I have to deal with the registration after this segment. So I just take this and pass and share it. Okay, before the next part of this, we have uh, two more segments after this. Uh, this one will talk about insurance, the most important uh, part of trucking that you have to have in order to get your authority or to be able to drive. And then we'll talk about financing and operational stuff after this session here. So now to, to Doug, we'll start with insurance, the fun part. Uh, everybody's had coffee, right? There's enough coffee there. Normally I bring hot, little hot candies and pass it out, but I couldn't find them in my house this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't want people nodding off. Uh, you know, insurance is not sexy nor is fun. Nobody likes to buy it. You never wake up the Friday before after Thanksgiving and go, I'm gonna go buy trucking insurance. It just doesn't happen. So let me find out who we're talking to. Who has a truck already? Mm -hmm. So you already have insurance. Mm -hmm. So you may find something out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Those who are in the process of buying a truck, leasing a truck. Everybody has a truck already? Everybody just thinking about doing a truck. Okay. Yeah, looking at buying a truck. What's that? I said thinking about buying a truck. Okay. All right. Uh, you're going to find out that other than the truck and the trailer, your insurance is going to be as expensive, whether you want it to be or not. Uh, and we can always thank the Jim Adlers of the world, you know, the big hammer. I see it on TV every 15 minutes. He only walks up to an 18 wheeler. Uh, that's exactly what happens. Uh, I have that, I'll preface this all the time. My brother in law drives for YRC, which is roadway and yellow combined. They combined five or so years ago. He goes to California and back. He's in a tandem. He goes to California and back twice a day, I mean, twice a week, never stops. Every time he gets close to California, there's going to be somebody in a car that will speed up to get in front of him on the highway and slow down to 45 miles an hour, really? wanting that truck to hit them. Oh, wow. So the Jim Adler of the world has made people think, I can get rich if a truck just hits me mm -hmm. because they, it's always the trucker's fault because truckers make what? A lot of money. So the courts always are in favor of the person in the car, not the truck. So if you don't have a truck or if you have a truck now, I urge you to get a camera that points out your windshield. And it could be as simple as a GoPro camera that you can get at any hardware, I mean, a uh, uh, store like uh, Academy or anything like that, that shows out your windshield. Now, YRC has started doing this about five years ago. And when that stuff happens, they're all computerized. So when they have to slam on their brakes, it tells the corporate office that the truck had to slam on their brakes. And so it sends a picture automatically to the office there in Irving, where he's out of, and shows exactly what happens. So what happens when that car just stops in front of you for no particular reason or slows down and nobody's in front of them, they're at fault, whether you hit them or not. That's what the camera will prove. So I urge you to spend $149 or whatever GoPro camera is and just anytime you're on the highway or getting on the highway, turn it on. I don't know how long it, it records, maybe an hour, I'm not really sure. Uh, there's different uh, GoPros, but I would urge you to do that. Okay, we're going to talk about insurance 101. And this is the basic insurance that you have to have. And you have some forms and stuff that you follow along. And uh, normally we can put this on the screen, but I can't seem to uh, 
if my son was here, he'd be able to do that. But not me. So I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but uh, basically, we're going to talk about. Uh, with a sheet in front of you. We're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about the types of insurance. There's different types of insurance. Uh, I myself, I'm a commercial insurance writer. Uh, I'm not a personalized writer that thinks they can write uh, commercial insurance. And I've seen commercial insurance written as low as the state minimums, which is you might as well just sign your house and your cars, your firstborn son away, because if you're involved in an accident and you have little coverage, they're going to come get you because Jim out of the world and now this James Henry guy is out there doing it with the big big thing, the 18 wheelers. And we're going to talk about the types of trucks with the different types of insurance and the type of businesses uh, and then uh, suggested insurance needs. Uh, I'm not here to sell you insurance. That's not what I do. Uh, I'm here to educate you on the type of insurance that you need and should have and have to have. We're going to talk about motor carrier filings or e-filings, if y'all have all heard that. And then we're going to talk about accident policy and workman's comp, which is something that you don't have to have, but we'll I get into that you should have. Uh, the first type of insurance we're going to talk about is the one that the state of Texas and the federal government says you have to have. It is uh, commercial auto liability, not comp and collision. That doesn't protect your truck. It doesn't fix your truck. All that does, it fixes the third parties that you hit or people said you hit. Now, there is, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, comp and collision on your tractor, on your, your bobtail. And then we're going to talk about cargo. Uh, and... Uh, pollution liability for those who are going to carry paint and stuff like that. And I'll get into that a little bit of that. And then bobtail and deadhead for those who have tractors. Okay, let's talk about who has a tractor that's going to be pulling trailers. Okay, all right. That is the, the most costly. Uh, the state or the federal, the F, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Association, the MOUSC, as I call it, because I can never get all the letters <laughs> right. So uh, they require you to have so much insurance. The $750,000 as a minimum, they're going to require you to have, if you carry any kind of freight in a truck that's over 40,000 pounds, which is going to be your 18-wheelers and your trailers and stuff like that. You're going to hear the term combined single limit. <clears throat> Combined single limit is what the commercial insurance, auto insurance talks about all the time. Example, for personal insurance for your car, uh, the minimum in Texas is 30,000, 60,000, 25,000. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know what that means, this is kind of where the 30,000, if you're involved in an accident, you have, you have up to $30,000 to fix anybody that's in that car. Hamlets, the whole bit, you know, the helicopter rides, all that stuff that they want that somebody sent them in a big truck. Uh, that's they always want all the bells and whistles. Uh, so the sixty thousand is what you have for the year to spend. This is personal lines, and this is what some of the commercial lines people are personal lines right for commercial. Then the twenty five thousand at the end of that, for those who don't know, that is your property damage. The other car. So let's do the math. If you hit an Escalade that's got four people in it, and every one of them has to go to the hospital, and that hospital bill is $120,000, well, you only have $60,000 for the year to spend. So you're upside down already. But now the Escalade is what, $115,000 now for those who can afford it? You only have $25,000 to pay for that $115,000 Escalade. So what I'm getting at, those who have minimum protection on your personal lines, you might look at that and get that fixed because there's not a car in the state of Texas that's worth less than $25,000 on the street, maybe 15% of them. And 25% of those people 
do not have insurance. So you would also, on your personal lines, you would need no fault and uninsured for those who don't. It's not expensive. I understand that's, but get back to the combined single limit. Uh, say the minimum that they want you to have $750,000 worth of coverage. And that sounds like an enormous amount of money. I agree. But we all go back to the the, uh, the snowstorm and the ice storm on 35. Mm -hmm. That kept showing that H E the H B uh, H, uh, yeah the H H E truck mm -hmm. that's one of the truck lines. Mm -hmm. They kept showing that poor guy running into that mass of cars. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not his fault that was there, <clears throat> but that's what <laughs> the news media focus on mm -hmm. is that truck. Because guess what? You guys make tons of money. So, look, Jim Adler gets you $60,000, $60 million. Your company paid for that. It's not a big deal. So that's why you have to have the large amounts of combined single limit. Now, the combined single limit means instead of the 30, 60, 20, 25,000, or there would be 90, 115,000 total, you have $750,000 for the entire accident. That means that's people, cars, uh, all that stuff. That is everything included, except your truck. That is just the people that you hit, or they say you hit, and they will be out there saying you hit them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Brent used to drive for uh, Tom Thumb when I worked for Tom Thumb years and years ago, and mm -hmm. uh, somebody just said that his truck hit their car in the parking lot. It didn't but nobody could prove it. So he got the ticket because the police gave him the ticket because he's in the big truck. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, GoPro camera is very, very important to have uh, or, or some type of camera system. Okay. Yes, sir. I heard Amazon wants like a minimum of a $2 million of coverage. They do. They want, they want a huge amount. And they also want you to have uh, I think it's uh, it's not a hundred thousand dollars worth of cargo, but it may be even be a million dollars worth of cargo because they want you. That's why they make all the money that they can because they they pass all that stuff off and all the liability they pass to their drivers. Uh, so yeah, that you know they pay well if you're an owner operator, uh, but they will make you. And there's not a lot of difference between uh, 750,000 and 2 million. It, there's, it, surprisingly, there's not. Uh, there may be, for the amount of coverage, it may be $2,000 a year, but that's a lot of money. Uh, and, and so whatever the company needs uh, is what you have to have. Yeah, that's true, that's a good point. Uh, so then we're gonna talk about <laughs> collision and comp. That is, what covers your truck, your tractor, your bobtail, whatever the case may be, box truck, you have to have it. If you have a lease, you have to have it. Sometimes if you lease the truck, they can run that into the lease. But you have to read that to make sure it actually covers you, not the leasing company. Very important. You have to read that fine line and uh, always, always send that information to your insurance person. Uh, if you don't have one yet, uh, at the end of this, I'm going to give you my score email. You can send me any information or questions. Uh, I've even had to look at policies for people and go like, no, you need this and you don't need this and send it back to them. And they go back to their insurance guy and get what they need. Our job in SCORE is to get you covered for what you need and not over because mm -hmm. you can't have too much insurance, believe it or not. And there's some insurance people out there who will, for lack of a better term, they like the money. Mm -hmm. uh, in my insurance, we always try to do the best for the client. We get involved with their business as much as we can because that's it's a, it's a big expense. Cargo. Cargo is other people's property that you are delivering. It is not stuff that you own. 
uh, it is stuff that you do not own. Now, if you get with, uh, for those who have a tractor and you might get on with a logistics company like Landstar. I use Landstar as a, an example because they're huge. Landstar will cover the cargo and your auto liability it's part of their agreement, but they, you have to pay for it out of what they pay you, but it's it's better than having to pay your own insurance. If you're going to ride with a logistics company under their authority, uh, then they're going to cover you. There you go, yawning. <laughs> I just started and you're yawning already. <laughs> I know. That's all right. Oh, do you? That's why you're falling asleep. Yeah, this guy didn't know what you're talking about. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, cargo. Cargo is something you have to have in the company that you pull for. They will tell you how much you need. Uh, if you don't know that, it depends on the quantity and the cost of the loads. So if you are pulling for Nebraska Home Furniture. They don't, they you have to have your own insurance and your own truck. They pay you to deliver home yes. furniture. They will have you have $100,000 worth of cargo because that's not your stuff you're delivering. It's not their stuff, it's the customer's stuff. So you have to cover it in case you're in an accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a company will tell you, like Landstar, they will tell you how much cargo coverage that you need. And that only, again, doesn't protect your stuff, just the stuff that you're delivering for other people. Pollution liability. Auto liability does not cover pollution liability. So for those who are doing uh, a freight for hire, and it's not, a lot of people start off with a truck and a trailer, and they do what they call a hot shot. You know, where you're delivering building materials and stuff on site uh, to the contractor or something. Uh, if that's what you're doing, when you talk to your insurance person, do not use the term hot shop. Do not let them use the term hot shop. The reason is hot shots have a higher premium rate than freight for hire. The reason is as a hot shot, Somebody's going to call you at 10, say, I need you to go pick up the stuff at Home Depot. I need it here by 11.30, about 10.30. And you're 25 minutes away. You haven't even gone to Home Depot yet. Mm -hmm. So what the underwriter looks when they say hot shot is they're going to break the speed limit. They're going to not drive careful mm -hmm. to get this delivered by a certain time. So never use the word hot shot. And people use it all the time, so I have to correct them. And there's nothing wrong with freight for hire because that's all you are. Somebody's hiring you to pick up something and bring to you. So hot shot, just take that out of your vocabulary if you haven't used that, you've used that yet. So back to that. If you are a freight for hire and you're delivering building materials and somebody calls you and said, I got five five-gallon buckets of paint I need you to pick up at Home Depot and deliver to me. Your auto liability will not cover that paint if it falls off the trailer and splashes on, oh, we talked about the $115,000 escalator, right? And that's what will happen. That's just the law of averages. That's gonna spill on some expensive car. It's gonna spill on the highway. Uh, that's a pollution and a hazmat cleaner. Your auto liability will not cover that. You have to have pollution. Even though you don't do it very often, don't take the chance on it happening. Because if you're not prepared for it, it's going to happen. So even if you have $10,000 worth of pollution, it doesn't cost much. You know, you got to remember the auto liability is going to be the biggest premium for your trucking insurance. Your common collision will be next. Everything added after that is going to be small compared to the total. So pollution liability, and you have your limits of what you want. You can have 10,000, 30,000, 15,000. So if you don't take a lot of paint as your freight for hire, you may do a $10,000. Or 
I would suggest you do 25,000 or something because this, the city or the county is going to charge you to clean up that paint on the highway. Your general liability or your auto liability will not cover that. It's completely different. It's a hazmat. Okay. Any questions on that? Yeah. So, so if your fuel or your uh, what say maybe fuel went still, they're not going to get you for pollution. After you mean if you if it's a wreck? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if if you have a wreck and the it's spilled out of the truck, then your auto liability will take care of that because it's, it's part of that $750,000. Okay. I'm just talking if you have a, a paint fall off a truck or you know that kind of stuff. So okay. you know, anything that's involved in an accident, your auto liability will take care of that. That's a good question. Yeah, the hazmat, uh... it won't, you won't have to do hazmat because they'll, they'll just, it, They'll, you know, the city will charge you your insurance company for cleaning it up, but it's still covered under that seven hundred fifty thousand or a million or two million, wherever you have for the auto liability. Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, anything involved in an accident, but if your truck is just sitting and it leaks oil, and somebody says, "Oh, you ruined my driveway," you know. I got to replace the whole driveway now. Mm -hmm. Well, your auto liability won't cover that because you're not involved in an accident. But your pollution will. But your pollution will. Okay. Okay. Uh, pollution, again, is not expensive, but it's really worth having if you're going to take any kind of flammable paint, any kind of anything like that. It's, it, you need to have. Okay. Uh, now that's for, and the box truck insurance. I think we're missing the sheet. Oh, it's on the back. Okay. Um, the box, now, and we're talking about workman's comp. Um, it's really, but some companies will write workman's comp for an individual owner or operator. Uh, sometimes you get an accident policy on yourself. That's important to do. I always tell this story. We were covering a person who delivers cars. He had a pickup truck and a, a Trailer that carried like nine cars. Well, in Texas, he was up, it was kind of rainy. He was up on the top thing, unloosing the car to be able to back it down. And he slipped on the rain, you know, on his uh, trailer and fell that 12 feet, whatever it is, broke both ankles. Guess what? You can't drive a truck when you have broken ankles. So he lost his truck, lost his business, all that, because he just didn't have an accident policy, which takes care of that kind of stuff. Mm. So ask about an accident policy for yourself. It's very important. Again, it's not as expensive as workman's comp, uh, but uh, it's nice to have in case things happen. You never know what's going to happen. And then we, we're going to talk briefly about general liability for a trucker. General liability for the trucker is not expensive at all because it never really comes into play. But for those who have a flatbed truck, uh, whether it's a small truck or 18 wheeler, and you have those straps and you have those lockdowns that weigh about 15 pounds a piece, and you have to throw those over the pallet of bricks or something, and somebody's walking on the other side of it and it hits them in the head. Doesn't happen very often, but it has happened. Your auto liability does not cover that because you're not moving. That is a general liability issue because you're stationary. If you have something on the ground and somebody walks by, say you're working on something, uh, tightening up, you know, you got the thing, you're tightening up the strap and you lay it on the ground, somebody trips over that, falls, breaks their ankle, your auto liability doesn't cover that. That's a general liability claim for a trucker. Not, and it's not expensive at all. So it's very important to have that. So that's your insurance guy about that. Really important. What we're trying to tell you is you want to be covered from A to Z. You don't want to be overcovered, but you want to be covered because one trip up, uh, you can lose everything uh, because of the Jim Mathers and the Jim Henrys of the world. <laughs> you all drive their cars and stuff and I don't know, their planes and all that stuff. I don't understand that. Okay. Uh, who has a dump truck? You might drive a dump truck. Okay. Let me tell you about a dump truck. The dump truck, how many do you have? Six. Six. Okay. The dump truck 
in Texas is the biggest revenue stream for the state of Texas and TxDOT. Hmm. This is the reason why. And we're going to get into the safer scores of a truck in a, in a little bit, because that has a lot to do with your insurance. But a dump truck, you see them all the time. Um, that they're definitely a hot shot. Don't use that term. Because uh, you're in a hurry to dump that load to get back in another load. I totally understand you get paid by the load. Mm -hmm. Why it's such a high revenue stream for the state of Texas and for the federal government on trucking is they will stop you once you drop off a load, you're going to have some residue dust, cover up your license plate, cover up a, 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 a okay. backup tail light. They can't see it or it's too dim. They'll stop you. But it may have happened to you already. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the dump truck, I urge you to have the little whisk room in the cab. So when you pick up a load, walk around that truck, wipe everything off. When you dump the load, wipe everything off. Once they stop you, once a state trooper stops you in a truck, they will give you up to three tickets. That's kind of their non-quote thing, quoted that they, they, talk, they don't talk about. But if they stop you, they're going to walk around your truck, dump truck, tractor, bob, uh, box truck, whatever. They're going to walk around your truck they're going to thump every tire. You have to learn as a truck driver what that sounds like when it's completely inflated. It has a certain sound. So you see these little bass at Academy and all that kind of stuff called a thumper. Uh, that's not just for fishing and hitting sharks in the head with it. And that is to thump your tires. So there is a sound that the truck, the tire will make. And the Texas troopers in every state will know that. If they thump a tire and it sounds hollow, means it's low on air, you cannot air that tire up. It has to be replaced on the side of the road. So that's a $500 ticket. I mean, because you have, the guy's got to come out and bring a tire. Uh, the, the federal Motor Safety Association says you cannot air that tire up. So you got to learn what that sounds like. So every time you leave your truck, when you're on the, whether you're covered by the logistics auto liability, check their trailer. If it's their trailer, because the trailer is going to be attached to you at that time, just check everything around. The amber lights around the top of those five that go on top of the truck, if one of those is out, They'll write you a ticket for that. They'll have you turn on your windshield wipers. If there's a streak, they will write you a ticket for that. Yes. So what do you mean a streak? I'm gonna... Like if you, if your windshield wipers, you know, when you know when your windshield wipers on your car they need to replace when they're working, there's a streak that just doesn't clean the water off. Oh, okay. Yeah. If they're torn or something like that, they will give you a ticket for that. If your mud flaps are torn. They will give you a ticket for that. Mm -hmm. If they can't read your license plate or a stoplight or something, they'll give you a ticket for that. So it's very important that you maintain the truck, whatever type of truck you have, uh, because that goes to the truck, basically in the company, which would be you if you're independent, and a safer score. A safer score is all of that stuff together. If you have a perfect score, You've always been stopped and everything's been good. You're going to have a safer score of 90 or above. If you get a hit on a windshield wiper or a dirty license plate or something like that, it's a hit. And sometimes your safer score may be below 80. When your safer scores below 85, the insurance companies go, oh, yeah, they're not a safe driver. So, Logistically, they're going to have a wreck before the guy who has a 90 score. Whether that's true or not, that's how underwriters look. So the better you maintain your truck, the better your insurance rate is. Now, as a trucker, even because who has a CDL? Everybody's got a CDL? No? 
If you don't have a CDL, I urge you to borrow a truck, go rent a truck from Ryder, a box truck or something, study for your CDL and get it. Insurance companies like people that have three years or better on a CDL. The reason is there's a lot of new truck drivers out there and Brent talks about them all the time. They can't drive a truck. They run over stop signs, all that kind of stuff. So again, your insurance is thrown into a pool. And the ones that have a, a CDL for three years or more get moved over here. The ones who have one or less than three years get moved here into the high premium rate. Because logistically, they think if you haven't had a CDL for, for more than three years, yeah. I have a question. You said a while ago they'll move you over here. You know. Well, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. Is that are you talking about people with a good or bad driving record? Or? Well, no. It, it, they they group truck drivers and how long they've been driving a truck. If you've been driving a truck for five, you know, three or more years, and you're accident free, you're going to have a, a pretty good premium. But if you have less than three years on a CDL whether you have any accidents or not, the underwriters will think that they'll put it in their little system and there's a greater chance that you're going to have an accident because you haven't been driving a truck long enough. That's just, it's like when you're 16 years old, if you have 16 year old kids, your insurance rate is, is incredible for a 16 year old kid. Once they get 25, it drops down, but that's how they do with trucking. But they, they do on the CDL. So I urge you if you don't have one yet, uh, go get one and have it. Yes. So if you're an owner and you don't have a CDL, but you use drivers that have a CDL, is that okay? Or do you suggest that the owner gets CDL too? I always suggest the owner gets a CDL because, again, in that little mix of insurance, uh, they're going to say that owner is going to get in that truck at one point to take it to the service station, take it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if you on a commercial liability or commercial policy, mm -hmm. if you are not added as a driver, you are not covered when you're driving that truck. So if you have multiple drivers, uh, you know, you have multiple trucks. I, I'm just uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. I would I would suggest you get one. You don't have to have one, but again, we're moving into which interest premiums on truckers are just astronomical. It makes me mad that they're high because they should not be as high as they are. And we write through a lot of different companies, and every one of them, there are some companies who just don't write from Texas anymore for trucking. If they do, they drop the minimums down when you can't even qualify. Uh, for a tech stop uh, because they don't want to write trucking insurance because of the Jim Adler's of the world and stuff. I keep bashing him, but he just when it's on TV every 15 minutes. Uh, and, and so that's some of the reason that the insurance rate has gone up. Uh, and in trucking, especially with the 35 mix up, you know, there was probably several trucks involved in that. And every one of those truck drivers were cited, not any car in the front, I guarantee you every truck driver was cited. That's just how they don't pick on you, but they do. I hate to say that. Uh, so uh, I guess in your personal car, you're even with your CDL and you're in your personal car and you have an accident, mm -hmm. that goes to your MBR yes. or your modal vehicle record. Yes. So it's important that you have a clean driving record in your personal car and in a truck, because it all goes into the premium fixes. Yes. So you were, you were saying a while ago about the truck driver, you know, on that, that accident. Yeah. That, uh, JB uh, Hunts, what the truck was. I'm sorry. Yeah. JB Hunts, I just now remember. Okay. Is that, that the one where the expected. video was going around the, the truck that was stopped? And I guess it was a truck that was stopped. And then you see that one that's coming, like, that wouldn't that, you said it wasn't his fault. Wouldn't that have been his fault, though? I mean, he wasn't paying attention to the road. I mean, he's supposed to be driving slower than, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I I think they figured out that there was so much ice and it came up so quick because the ice wasn't anywhere 
north of that. For some reason, it was just right there in Denton or something, Haslett, whatever it was. It had to be right there. And that's why there was, when you have a 30 or 40 car pileup, that's because nobody is in control at that point. Uh, you know, the, the, the truck, uh, somebody should radio ahead. You know, that's what most truck drivers do because they watch out for themselves. And maybe that guy could have slowed down. But he wasn't the last truck to hit that group. He was just the one that everybody saw. Uh, and so he he got hit with it, you know. The, the reason I asked the question uh, is because uh, back where we're from over here in Joshua, uh, there was a girl uh, out on that 17. And uh, she decides she's going to commit suicide. She runs into a, uh, what was it, Coca-Cola truck, I think it was. And, oh, yeah. three, and, the re and I'm asking the question because would that make if, if he was a like an owner operator? I don't know if they do that for Coca Cola, but would would that have made his insurance? That would have made his insurance go up, right? Even though she committed suicide and ran into his truck intentionally. It it really depends. There's there's not there's no real guarantee your insurance is going to go up. If it's a one time deal and it's not your fault, mm -hmm. then your insurance shouldn't go up. If it does go up, change insurance companies. Oh. It shouldn't go up, but. You know, insurance companies right now, with, with all the hell and stuff Texas has had, uh, they're recouping their their profit, which they have. It's like the gas companies; they don't need to have five dollars gas or six dollars for diesel. It's ridiculous. You know, they made like thirty-five billion dollars or something last quarter or something. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason for, but and there's no reason for the the increase in premiums, but they are increasing. Even homeowners insurance on the personal lines are increasing because of the hell. Because again, everybody in Texas is thrown into a pool in Texas. You know, so it's up to your insurance agent to fight for you to make sure that doesn't happen. And most insurance companies, and most, most of them would. Okay. Uh, tow trucks. Who has a tow truck? Nobody has a tow truck? Good for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> they're expensive to operate and the insurance is a little more expensive because you always have to have cargo we talked about that hundred fifteen thousand dollars escalate that you have to pick up and then if you're supposed to have another escalate on the on the hook you have to have two different types of insurance on the hook and on the flatbed rollback type so that's that's good you don't have to but we only even cover truck um, the tow trucks all right let's talk about motor truck fightings You've heard the term e filings, yes. right? Okay. Uh, this is the VMC 91, is the one that you have to send to TxDOT. That shows you your insurance, your insurance carrier, how much your liability is, everything. Even shows your insurance company. The BMC? Yeah, it's BMC 91. It's also known as a Form E for those who've been in the truck for a while. Again, they're going to want you to have, depending on what type of freight you have, uh, if you have people, like if you have a van or you have a party bus, that's going to be a $5 million dollar auto liability premium, not premium, but that the coverage you're going to have to have. If you have just general freight, it'd be 750000 If you have what they call, not a hot shot, but a freight forwarder, <laughs> then you're, you you don't need but probably 300000 mm -hmm. uh, But if you're on the highway with a big truck, uh, 750000 combined single limit is what they're going to need. Okay, now who's going to do household movers? Furniture for people, good for y'all. That's a that's a whole new thing. Uh, you have to have uh, you have to have a different e filing for that. Uh, it's just an MC thirty four, and I think y'all have it on here. Uh, and then for those who are a freight forwarder, you don't have any trucks. But you sit in an office and uh, somebody calls you from XYZ company 
and it says I've got four pallets I need to go to the ABC company. Anybody have that? You don't have any trucks. You just sit in the office and find independent truckers to deliver that. Anybody have that? I'm okay. thinking about it, like getting the freight brokerage. Okay? Yeah. I'm thinking of doing that. Okay. Yeah. If you are, you have to have what they call a $75,000 bond. Okay. Uh, it's called a surety bond, and they run around $3,000 on top of your, your insurance. And then you okay. would look at contingent auto liability, which is not expensive, but you have a lot of truck drivers out there that have bad insurance people who don't have enough coverage for them. Okay. So if they're involved in an accident, they're pulling for you, so you're going to get sued as well. Oh, wow. So contingent liability. I know. Isn't that crazy? I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you this is if they're real world. <laughs> it's like, what can you do? I know. I'm just saying this is the real world. <laughs> and it's better to be, yeah. and contingent liability is not expensive. Not expensive. It's not okay. anything like you're okay. covering a truck. Mm -hmm. Your contingent liability is okay. when their insurance runs out, they're going to sue you. Your insurance picks up for them. So okay. you're like the umbrella for that. Okay. The truckers you use. Yes, sir. Back to the BNC uh, 91. Is that an annual filing? Uh, yeah, the, the BMC 91, that's, you have to do that yearly. Okay. Uh, and uh, with TxDOT, you have to have that insurance 30 days in effect before they allow you to run with it. So what we do is if, if, the, incre if, if the premium is increasing, I'll try to find them a different premium. Your insurance guy will do the same thing. I know we have to get that in effect 30 days prior to their insurance going out because it takes 30 days for TxDOT to get that stuff correct in the system. Yes. The, the, the insurance guy send it to the... Yes, okay. they, should. they should. It's not that they always do. Like I said before, you have some personalized people out there who think they can do commercial, uh, so they don't know that. Uh, you have they have to tell the insurance company yes they will be need filings and they they charge you thirty five dollars for the filing it's just included in the premium. Where is that? Do we need to request proof that they send it that they file? Or how will we know that they, they do? Email? You have to make sure that they do. You have to tell the ask them. Send you a letter with the big thing uh, e filing. Yeah, text out will send you exactly. Okay, and I'm gonna uh, tell you where you can go. Uh, it's called uh, text dot dmv forward slash truck stop. I think that's yeah. you know MCD, you know about that MCD or something like huh? that. MCD or is yeah MCC, MCC yeah. It's uh, yes. let me get let me get make sure I've got the right thing. I'm running, I'm going out. I couldn't get in the building earlier. That's why I was so late. Kept knocking on the door. Uh, let me see. It's called where is it? This is where, especially if you're an owner operator and you're wanting to find loads uh, to take. Yeah, it's text, it's txdmv.gov forward slash mccs forward slash truck stop. I believe that's what it is. You can just Google. Uh, text dot truck stop and, and if that's not it they may have changed it because they've changed it on me a couple of times uh, uh, but you'll be able to find it and what that does is you can pull that up and pull you know you, everybody's got a text dot number on their truck you can put that text dot number in that app and it will pull up the company name the company owner all their insurance all their trucks if they're active or if they're inactive. Mm -hmm. So if your insurance is not up to date, you're going to be inactive, big red letters. Okay. Or if, it, if you see a truck on with the text dot number and you pull that up and it says inactive, that means their insurance is not in effect. But if you're looking for loads or something as independent, then those are good 
that's a good thing to go to because you have the company name and information you can call them. Hey, do you have any loads available? How can y'all work? That kind of stuff. So that's uh that has every text dot number uh, in the state of Texas and uh, all MCS numbers for the federal government as well. So if you have all that stuff, that's a that's a good app to go to. And it's the same mm -hmm. side that we, uh, we uh, looking for like a report card of your trucking company? Yeah, that's basically what it is. It, that's a good term. It's a report, report card. It's, it's like a report card. I mean, mm -hmm. they tell you how good you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it it doesn't really say how good you are. Uh -huh. It just it just tells them uh, the owner's know. name, uh -oh. the, the contact information, the uh -oh. trucks, every truck that they are they run under their authority have to be listed with text dot or they're not covered. Uh, so that's another thing. If you're running like a Landstar or something like that, you put their text dot number in there after you work for them for a while. If your truck is not listed, you need to go back to them and go, my tractor is not listed. Mm -hmm. Why is that? You're not covered if it's not listed. Under their authority. Yes, I was trying to find it. Let me, yeah. Texas DMV truck stop. Let me see what exactly which one it is. Okay. You can pass this around. This is what it's going to look like. And I think uh, you can put uh, you can put the, uh, the company name in there, the text dot, the text dot number. Uh, you, know, you can put a lot of information in there that will pull that company up. Even if you just put it to CGFT on the Google search, okay. don't put it up. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's what I did. Yeah. They have changed that because uh, it used to be really, really short. <laughs> then it got to be really long. I don't know why it's you know, the state of Texas. And you mentioned you can find loads on this. Like, how does that work? I'm sorry, you what? You mentioned you can use this site to find. Loads. You can use that site uh, to find anything you want about a trucking US dot number, okay. text dot number. Okay. If, you know, if you're just driving and, and you're thinking about starting a freight forwarder, yes. you know. You just call those guys and go, hey, who do you pull for? Okay. You know, who who do you use as a freight broker? You know, it's okay. a lot of things you can do, uh, especially if you're an owner operator. Uh, okay. You know, are you hiring owner operators? You know, because once you buy a truck or lease a truck, it cannot set. Mm -hmm. That truck's <laughs> going to cost you a thousand minimum, a thousand dollars a month. Uh, probably two thousand with insurance and everything. It it can't sit. So uh, I'm sure Tim will probably tell you don't buy the truck until you've done your research because that truck cannot sit. You will go bankrupt quickly unless you have a lot of money saved. And I would suggest you don't start a trucking business until <clears throat> you you have a little bit of. But it's it's a it's really a. But you can like I say you can Google just. Texas truck stop, and you have to go past all the truck stops. They want you to like pilot and all that kind of stuff, you know, to get to the mm -hmm. Texas DMV truck stop. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and then we talked about hazmat on the filings. Uh, if you look on there, you have uh, the MCS 90 is your hazmat permit. Uh, it will be on your driver's license. Uh, it will be like an endorsement, and then uh, the company, or you can get a buy a placket that says you have hazmat on there. Uh, now, would, would you have to have a separate uh, policy for the hazmat, or would it all be covered under the? Um... As long as you have pollution, because the hazmat is covered by the pollution liability. Okay. Okay, and the pollution liability is separate. Than the auto liability or general liability, okay. completely different because it's, your, it's a whole different animal. Because mm -hmm. you get too many people involved with that. So, you know, I mean, gas stations have to have it, truckers have to have it. You know, hazmat 
Uh, there's a certain test you have to take for hazmat. You know, uh, Brent's got to do that. He's a physical you have to take for hazmat. You know, get to be in good shape and all that. So there's a lot of stuff uh, that a truck driver has to go through just because they want you to be safe out there. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, you uh, you got to do a physical when they start that. Uh, when you do hazmat. Yes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not gonna say Brent. Have you had, do you have a hazmat? Uh, well, I had it, but I got rid of it. I didn't want it at least ten yeah. years ago. It made sense new. At Brent's least ten years ago, they started that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Brent's got to do it every every year or two years. Two years of being, okay. I think. But he he drives for a, a big company, so I'm not sure about individual. I'm just using that. I just know what Brent has to go to. Yeah, I don't know. I did it um, 2013. Yeah. And, I have to it mm -hmm. yeah. and you may not, as an independent, I'm not really sure. Yeah, All I know is I just go what what Brent Brent says, and it's a big deal for him. Have to go through that. Yeah. Okay, my uh, on the back page, that is my um, uh, that's my score email. Mm -hmm. But you can, I'm yeah. going to give you my cell phone. You can text me. I don't have your oh, mm -hmm. score email. It's on the uh, on, oh, you don't have one. No, I don't have okay. One. okay. Uh, <laughs> You already gave us your cell phone? Is that what you said? Huh? You already gave us your cell phone number? No, we're going to give it to you now. It's 817 240 7629. If you ever have a question about your insurance, another question about insurance coverage, be sure and text me first because <laughs> I get like 50 spam calls a day. Mm -hmm. And if you're if your name is not in my phone, I don't answer. I, I, I don't need a new car warranty. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a new what? Car warranty. Oh, you know, you, that, that's what calls on the time. It's just irritating. And what was your name again? Uh, my name was Doug, D O U G. The last name was White. 817 247 Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And just text me and go, uh, you know, this is, what's your name? Magda. Uh -huh. Magda. Magda. What's the nickname? Yeah. This is Magna from the list trucking. Yeah, from the trucking mm -hmm. score thing. And I'll call you up. Mm -hmm. Then I'll put you in my phone and mm -hmm. I'll know who it is. Because mm -hmm. I want we be want you to be successful mm -hmm. and we want you to be covered by. But you have an insurance company? Yeah. Yeah. What is the name? It's called insurance of Ben City. Is that a Bedford? But I live in Granbury. Oh, you live in Bedford? Yeah. I, my wife and I live in Granbury. So we work out of the house in Granbury. We never come to the office. Yeah. I was just saying that. Yes, we do. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. $750,000 worth of insurance coverage. Okay. And upon registering with all these brokers, I was told that they want a million dollars. Yeah. Pretty much. They, they'll tell you, like I said earlier. So the 750 is not good? Not for that company. Oh, so not so for I, have, I have a list of many, many brokers. Most of the time, JB Hunt and uh, I forgot the other one. Yeah, they do accept the seven hundred fifty thousand okay. dollars coverage, but some of them want a million dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Like they made it as a requirement. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like uh, Amazon requires two million to drive for them, uh, but there's not that much difference. I, I can say if you have a truck. You really need a million dollars to buy a single limit because most people are going to require that. So should we change it to a million dollars? If you want to do for those guys, guys if you can make money with them, mm -hmm. uh, get with your insurance guy and see what the difference in the premium would be. And you just have to do the numbers. You know, trucking is all about, and uh, Tim's going to talk earlier to, uh, about that, is all about the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, the cost. you can overextend yourself in expenses and not make any money. Mm -hmm. So if your policy to make it up to 250000 goes up $1,500 a year, 
Are you going to make $3,000 from this company profit? Then it's probably worth it. If you're going to make $1,500 from these guys, it's not going to be worth it. So you just have to do the numbers when it comes to that kind of stuff. How much is it yearly for this, you know, million dollars or what? What's Again, uh, I didn't get to that one, and I'll cover that one. Tim's not quite here yet. Uh, on the back page is uh, some of the factors for insurance costs. It's hard to judge if, because it's your driving record, your entire life driving record. Uh, uh, it's going to be your credit check. It's a soft credit. It, it's like anything else in this company. If you have marginal credit, for some reason, they're going to penalize you to start a business. It's just, we're backwards with that in, in, in this country for right now, and it has been for years. Uh, the age of the truck and trailer. Insurance companies like in tractors and trucks that are newer than 1995. If you have a truck older than that, there's going to be a premium increase just because that is put in a little bitty roundabout and spits out a bunch of numbers. If that truck age, woo, guess what? Even though it could be immaculate, a lot of trucks that age or not, they have more accidents. So you're in, you're in this premium with, you know, a, a one year CDL. Yeah. Yeah. So with, it also works with, very new trucks, like just recent mm -hmm. or new models, right? Yeah. Well, again, uh, that is the, what's expensive with the new truck is the common collision part, not the auto one. Oh, I see. It based on if you have a new truck and a new CDL, oh yeah, mm -hmm. you're going to be right here because you're going to have a break in the next six months. That's what underwriters think, mm -hmm. whether it's true or not. I'm just telling you, that's just how. Underwriters are the scourge of insurance. <laughs> I have people that have perfect and, and they're ready to go up, and I'll have to call them and go, Why? Well, that's just the way it is, Doug. No, it's not. We're just going to leave. We're going to leave you and go somewhere else unless you drop it back down to where it needs to be. Uh, and so your insurance guy will, will do that as mm -hmm. well. Uh, and then the length of time we have your CDL, we talk about that and how much you're on the road. In other words, if you drive all 50 states, your insurance is going to be more expensive than if you drive just in Texas. The reason is you're on the road longer, more days, more hours. Oh, yeah, they put that in a little gizmo and it spits out. Oh, yeah, there's a high percentage chance they're going to be in a wreck because they're on the road more than your average truck driver. Mm -hmm. So that's all goes into the premiums. Uh, and then, of course, what insurance, what cargo do you carry? Excuse me, and the credit is the credit for the owner, uh, for the individual, or for the business? What's that? The credit. Uh, it depends on if it's a new business, uh, it'll be the owner social. Mm -hmm. If it's going to be an established business, it might be uh, the EIN number. Okay. If you have the EIN number. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it's going to be on your driving record and uh, you know, how long you've been in business. If I'm wrong, you had your CDL mm -hmm. and what your driving record is. Yes. One more thing, sir. Huh? Um, we have that seven hundred fifty thousand dollars yeah. worth of coverage. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned about the BMP ninety one T mm -hmm. filing. Do we really need to do that as well? Right. Your insurance company should have sent that to TechDoc. Okay. That's their job. How do you find out if they How did it or not? Out? You can go on the Texas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Doug, I'm going to need your help because I am. I have some quotes on policies. I'd love to talk with you offline. You know, just sure. to get. Yeah. Just send me. Send me the quotes and just to make sure I have that auto contingent auto liability. Yeah. Covered. Yeah. A lot of people don't under, don't don't understand that, and so I kind of bring that up because people think they can make a lot of money. You can sitting in an office, but there is liabilities. Yeah. that people do, you really don't think about. Mm -hmm. But yeah, your insurance, once you, if you increase it to 1 million, uh, they should send a new e-filing to TxDOT that shows you the new number. <clears throat> but it takes about 30 days to get those updated. 
but you'll have your insurance policy to show your company that you're going to pull for. So, uh, you know, it just takes out more. It just takes a while for text out to get better. So on, on the score, the ones that don't have the uh, insurance yet, they'll be able to uh, go through and find the best uh, insurance company for the uh, for your company. Oh yeah, yeah. Now's the time to start looking at that. They really can't give you a firm until you. They can give you what they call a estimation uh, of if you're going to get this year old truck and you, you've had your CDL for this long, they can put that in there. They just can't finalize it until you actually get the, the VIN number for the truck. Mm -hmm. So, Is it better to pay for the insurance monthly, at whatever it is? Is it better to pay for it monthly or every six months, every year, or yearly, or what? It depends on how the money is for the company. <laughs> Most people do it monthly. Uh, with Progressive, and Progressive writes, good trucking insurance believe it or not they really do they'll give you a premium for paying it in full yeah mm -hmm. they have the choice yeah mm -hmm. so they'll they'll give you if, if you have the twenty thousand dollars to, to pay for it there's one truck i have one guy that is from score and uh, it, it's it, he's the one that jumped out too fast and uh his insurance is, I didn't write it, and I've, I've even tried to find it less expensive for him just to show him where to, to take it. And his insurance is $46,000 a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, one truck? Two trucks. Just which is very hard. But there's a lot of, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of things in there. You know, <laughs> new in business. You know, jumped out too soon. Doesn't have he doesn't have a CDL. His drivers are like, terrible drivers. Like only owner that we don't have a CDL class A. You know the owners. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good if you do. Do um, you own trucks? Yeah. Y'all don't have CDLs. No. Okay. What happens if the truck breaks down on the highway or you have to take it in for service? Who drives it? We either do a tow truck or we get another driver to come and bring the other two trucks. Okay. So we put on one driver. As long as you can do that, that's good. That's costly for you. Yeah. Where it'd be good if you have your own CDL and you can go get it or, mm -hmm. you know, it's important to know how to drive the trucks that you own. Yes. Uh, it's just it, it's just important to do that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have it, but the insurance, the driver, mm -hmm. the owner can be excluded as a driver, but you can never get in the truck mm -hmm. to drive it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some financing, you know, that they they require that the owner have a CDL. You know, it's important because at some point, underwriters know that driver is going to have to get in that truck at one point. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to pay a driver to drive the truck to get the oil changed. You know, drivers cost, what, $50 an hour or so? Mm -hmm. You're going to have him drive the truck there and sit there while they do? Or are you going to take it there and somebody's going to come pick you up? especially because in our, in our business, to be honest, um, she, has, she has a deficiency of the skills and knowledge about the unit, about the truck. Okay. And that's so that's why I feel that like we do have a deficiency of not having a CDL. That's good. That we don't know what inquires and other skills and knowledge. We depend on the knowledge from the driver. Okay. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, as long as your insurance, you know, as long as you Yeah, and every uh every year when we renew, uh they always ask uh, if, if uh, my husband and I have a CDL. Have yeah. a CDL. Because you say no. <laughs> your premium would drop off a little bit if you ah, okay. Because they, they're they're charging a little bit of extra premium mm -hmm. when they don't tell you, mm -hmm. but it's in there yes. because the owner doesn't have a CDL. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have it. It's just sometimes it's good to have mm -hmm. as far as underwriters go. I don't work to you you around. Sure. 
sure you're not stuck with me the rest of the day. That'd be boring. Yeah, <laughs> it's not exactly an insurance uh, question. Okay, is there, is there a website you can go to? Like, like I know a lot about the trucks, you know, like the regular commercial trucks and everything. But the uh, what do you call it? What'd you say it was? The uh, not hot sauce. Uh, oh, freight forwarder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, anyway, those uh, like <laughs> if if you're in the you say too. you say you required the say you got a load and you're required to you know you gotta have a cdl for that load uh the like the and i don't know what they call them a hot you know one of those kind of evil but on a truck a big truck you know it's uh ten thousand you know what is it twelve thousand thirty four thirty four on both your tandems you know and uh, on that kind of truck on a hot shot truck uh is there a like a place a website you can go to to find out what the load you know what i'm saying for the front tires the back tires you know what i'm saying no, um, that, that tells you kind of like the rules of the not that I'm aware of. Really? Like an inspection list yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. I, yeah, I'm you can that. you can probably Google. Yeah, you know, I, 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 tires I, I, on the the motor on the trailer, and they'll probably tell you. But it really depends on the load that you have. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know. Uh, hey, Kim. Hey, thanks. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like based on the load that you have and where it needs to be. So. I know there's usually more weight on the front of the trailer than on the back of the trailer. But if it's on the back of the trailer, you're going to do this. I think that's so that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if it's 60 40 or 70 30. I'm not really sure. But you can probably just Google low distribution. Him, they know. Low distribution in the trailer. Get to what's in there. Yeah. All the instructions and regulations and rules and the weight and how many. How many tires and how many axles and everything? And what was the website? The DOT. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you can probably find it at the Florida Mayor, Boulder mm -hmm. Federal Motor Carrier Safety yeah. Association, yeah. Uh -huh. MOUSC. That uh, you can probably find it in that as well. Any other questions? Guys, thanks for, and you only gone once. I appreciate it. Not <laughs> 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 I appreciate all the questions. I appreciate the attention. And uh, you have my email, you have my website. Um, like I say, when you be sure and text me, if you call me, you're not in my phone, I'm not going to answer. You can leave a message, then I'll know who you are. Just say that I was at the score trucking meeting. meeting or something, and I'll know and I'll call you back. i uh, love to help you guys. I want to make sure that you're covered, covered correctly, but not over. Okay, do we have any more questions in the chat? Oh, this is. Yeah, I found out. Alive. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> the people watch you. There you go. Hey, y'all still out there? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, any chat? Yeah, there was asking about the slides. I get them the slides. Well, I put the slides in. Okay. Oh, did you find them? Yeah. Good. Okay, thank you. Well done. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, now you'll find what your yes is. Your contact information, I have that, so I'll send that okay. at the end as well. Okay, it's just a recap. What coverage do I need for a dump truck? A dump truck? Mm -hmm. Okay, whoever asked about the dump truck, it's always going to be the same. Uh, a lot of dump trucks have $500,000 worth of CDL because you really don't have any freight of any value, which dirt. Uh, so I would have a minimum of five hundred thousand dollars combined single limit, and that's all. You don't need cargo. Uh, you know, you'll need conflict collision for your for your truck. But uh, as I said earlier, if you have a dump truck, be sure and keep a little whisk broom in your cab and clean your truck off after every load pickup and every load drop off mm -hmm. because. The, the state troopers, they're waiting. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just waiting what they do. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what they do. I mean, that's, that's, they want to make it safe. Mm -hmm. But your lights can't be seen by the car, by the car behind you. Mm -hmm. There's going to be an accident. So I hope that answered the question. Okay, perfect. That's it. And uh, thanks, Doug. Yeah. Sorry about the technology stuff, but you know, I, oh, it's okay. I had to do everything. Well, that's, that's why I'm kind of, that's why I brought this. Yeah. I couldn't figure out. I came here at 7 30 and I just, Put, Normally with together. this, you go to where it has ATM ATM one or yeah, two. Yeah, here there is right here, but I couldn't figure out how well, it's gotta be on the TV though. It is on TV. <laughs> That's what this is for. Oh. Yeah, but I just couldn't figure it out. Okay. I've been using almost three years. 
Okay, that's it. Thank so, y'all. Enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Thanks. So we have any, if you want to, you can take a uh, five to ten minute break. Let's run two down here, two downstairs, and grab a sandwich, a drink. Um, thank you. Yeah, because it's long, and I want you. I wanted to go back to doing live because I have more time. I get impatient of doing stuff online. He has a Sprite. It's too, yeah, it's too here. You pass it? Okay, you got it for Right. It makes it easier conversation when we have three things about it. I think the black one is the zero. Yeah, zero, and this is regular. Coffee still, there's a little love. Okay, now the rest is going to be all on me. So, what I'm going to do is reposition. Give you take it. Here's a handout. Only seven you have the copy. I don't have enough time to go and copy it. Um, copy. Actually, this is all I have on the list. So, yeah. at the very end, I, I handle the registration of uh, the people when I take attendance. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I get to go talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say good thing about it. I will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who's Huh? You ready? Yeah. What? No, however. Oh, I just feel like oh, no, I just think you're okay. That's pretty cool that you work together. Yeah, yeah we're actually uh, we're actually kind of here at Little Place right now, so oh, really yeah, we had a rental business there for a while. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're the we're actually the last two now. We are the, like what immediate blood related. So, uh, my son, what? So guess what? September sixteenth, right? And then my dad died October third. And uh, borrowed one of those check pieces. Uh, Great. Yeah, you know, so it's just me and her now. So we've got to take care so of her. What's here? Now I got a thirty-year-old daughter. So. <laughs> She wants to go into a hot salad with me. And, uh, but, uh, I don't stay hot. Yeah. 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 But I hear that a lot. Yeah. 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 I'm Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Well, I was in the Navy, but I got to get out. Oh, no. Okay. They, uh, they didn't want me to get out. And uh, I was pretty bad. Oh, well, I sold that last year, the, the second one. Yeah. Uh, second. Mm -hmm. 
It may not look like it, but I mean, my knees are four up. I've got all kinds of things. Thank you, thank you. Well, actually, being dumb growing up, you know, oh, yeah. but I was tempted to fall in blood through. <laughs> I found out different. <laughs> but even even considering, like me and her, that's one thing we have in common, other than our height, is uh, the fact that uh, we both feel the same. I don't feel like they were 16. I feel like the older I get, the younger I feel. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I'm curious why you have it. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna get started by like in two minutes. I'm gonna take both my hands real quick. Uh, everybody just have sandwiches, drinks, right? Salad, great. One second. <laughs>
Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was on mute. Thank you. Okay, back to the LLC. For the LLC and the sole prop, you do not want to be a sole prop because you one owner. That's means solo, one owner, like one singer. Mm -hmm. Okay, you will be liable for everything. Period. Even if you file bankruptcy, uh, you can probably get rid of the debt. That's extreme. But if it's something like uh, like this truck that caused an accident that you are at fault with. It's kind of hard for the bankruptcy judge to say, mm, you're gonna to have to be sympathetic towards it, that he won't, it was not malicious, it was accident, but you should have known better as a professional driver, as a CDL, uh, you shouldn't have known better. Uh, it will fall on you, okay? That is your only option to get out of it. And it's at his mercy. Uh, one case in point, we had a person that came through uh, this class did everything he's supposed to do. This is by 2017. He had a truck. He you know, got him started. He was going and he was in his business park. And he was looking at his GPS. We were still using GPS because it wasn't that sophisticated, even like five years ago, on your phones. Um, so now you're looking at GPS uh, and he looked down and he didn't see the stop sign in his business park. Well, a car came in front of him, which was two teenagers. He hit the car because he didn't see the stop sign. He just looked down for a second. Hit the car. One of the kids died. One of the kids uh, did recover. The youngest one recovered. I can't remember if the, the oldest died or the other, the youngest died. It was like a 15 and a 15 year old. And when the police came, he was truthful. And that's what they honored him for. The, the judge was sympathetic, say, hey, I just looked down for a second. I am so sorry. And the insurance company did not want him, him to say that. But the bottom line, he's at fault. What did you hear from Doug? Anytime something happened, you're at fault, right? So just to fess up to it. And and because you can also start a new business tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. So fess up to it. Keep that simple. Wall yourself up. And he did. The prosecutor was really lenient towards him because he he told the police right there several times, he's at fault. I'm sorry. And he was remorseful. They don't get this very often. That's rare when they give that someone going to be honest with them uh, because it, it takes the police back because mostly people, 95% of the time, they're gonna, not going to tell you the truth. Were you speeding? Well, I didn't know I was speeding. You know, they know you were speeding. <laughs> you knew you were speeding. Um, so, you know, you say, okay, give me my, give me my ticket, uh, you know. So anyway, they uh, they did file charges. They did prosecute him, but the judge was sympathetic. The prosecutor was sympathetic. Uh, he ended up with um, adjudicated probation. He served like 30 days in jail, okay? Um, and he just went after that 30 days of jail, straight through with good credit and things like that. They give you like three days for you. So technically they told the family, hey, this is a sentence, but he probably won't do this. He's been, he was truthful to most of the very beginning. He took responsibility. He'd done everything he, he could do. It was just an accident. Now I know it doesn't bring your child back, mm -hmm. but he's remorseful. He said he's sorry. I mean, it can happen to either one of us. This is just one of those accidents. So he said he helped the insurance company get whatever they can get out of him, get out of them. And um, he did his 30 days in jail. I mean, what else you can do? It's like the same case of a kindergartner who, when I was teaching, picked up a knife, got tired of getting bullied, and said he's, she's going to go and take care of this bully in her kindergarten class. Now, fortunately, we did see the See Natalie walk down the hall. My music room is right next to it. And she got in her backpack, put this big old knife like this. And she was going to go to town on him. Natalie, what's wrong? Ah, you know, she just told us. But they wanted us to expel the uh, five year old. What yeah. can we can't expel the five year old? We can get the five year old off and push him to shove. But Scott just said she doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. You know, and she told us what's wrong at the very beginning. He's bullying me, and I just have it. I'm just going to take care of him. So, 
<laughs> so, no, we can't take care of it. The, the school pulling and counseling. But it's those simple things that those moments you can't capture. So soul prop, you're responsible for. Corporation, you're not. Now, the only way that can breach that trust of that corporation, you have 35 shareholders you can have. Up to 35, you can run it as a sole prop, but you are a corporation. The only thing is you can't pierce the veil. That means you cannot go to McDonald's on the company's card. Now, you can go to McDonald's on the company card if you are doing like business like this. But if they see too many of those, they say, no, this, you're using this as your personal bank account. Okay? So with that uh, corporation... You incorporate it, do it online. We have a class for that. Uh, it costs for Texas $300 for that franchise fee because the rate, and hasn't changed since 1984. When we used to go to Houston and go drive to put a corporation together, go to lunch in Austin and come yeah. back. <clears throat> so that gives you your, your once that file, that stamp is on there, that's when you're automatically protected, okay? And you only, unless you miss money, personally into that account is when you pierce the veil of the trust. So sole prop corporation. Everybody know that you have to be a corporation. Okay. Now that'll mean they now they can sue you, that corporation, 10 or 15 years later. Okay. It doesn't really matter. Yes, civilly three years, but the argument is if it's something hazardous or something found out later, um, then they can sue you from a Haley's corpus that you still liable for. That's why you have insurance. They can go and get that from the insurance company. So corporation, you can do it online for $300. At $300 is a, a fee that you pay to the state. It hasn't changed since 1984, so it's still a good deal. $300 was a lot as a week's salary in 1984. Today, we eat out at $300. So uh, yeah. Yeah, some once a year you might do it, but three hundred dollars is what it is. But the Texas is saying that since we don't have state income tax, we want to tax you at the very beginning because you might not make any taxes for us as long as you live. For Texas, you have to be over a million dollars of income before taxes kick in for Texas. Okay, and, but you have to file every single year once uh, the anniversary falls around. Okay, that doesn't include that doesn't count the federal taxes. This just for uh, the state of Texas. You're exempt from one million dollars and under. A lot of business do not make over a million dollars, and it's not that much tax you pay over a million dollars anyway. It's when you start elevating up, you start to look. Okay. Uh, also in that LLC, federally you have to file your return. So. You have to file, uh, you have to get with an accountant. You have to file a certain uh, tax form on top of your uh, your return. It's not this Schedule C. You file a different partnership form, and that is eight something. Um, you file that every single year. And why is that important? Because the banks, when people find them here, I'll talk about them in a few minutes. When the banks look at that, they want to see your profit and loss. But they're looking at what you're giving them in financials, but they're also looking at what you're paying in taxes. They know there's a difference between the two, but if you want money from the, the banks, they need to show that you can service the debt. Okay, You cannot be negative, negative, negative. They say you don't have any cash flow. Well, I'll do this for your taxes. I'm sorry, you're going to have to ante up for that first meeting. If you want money for them, you need to prepare like you prepare for a mortgage. We just all of a sudden, oh, I want to go get a mortgage. We have to prepare for mortgages. Now it's more expensive today, but even before, we just don't say, even with your credit, we just want a mortgage. We have to prepare for that mortgage down payment, make sure our credit is, is clean enough, make sure that if anything is exempt, we can exempt that off, make sure we have enough that we can show in our bank account that we get cash flowing every single month. So we have to prepare for that bank loan. You have to do the same thing in this particular case. So your taxes needs to be to the point that you have to pay a little in order to get something from them. Mm -hmm. And if you want an SBA loan, they will not give you a loan if you name it. They still have underwriting criteria. They, they try to make it easy for you, but no, it's not easy. They still want you to feel uh, be bankable in the sense that 
you have to show you can service a debt. Remember, but Myron talked about earlier about the big banks gives money to the CDFIs, the nonprofit banks. The reason they do that because they don't make money off of small loans. During my time in the 80s uh, with business, he said it was true. They look at your business plan, look at, okay. They ask you, tell me about your business. What do you do? You have a minute to tell them what it is. They go straight to the financials. What's the cash flow looks like? They want to know if you losing money, how are you going to pay them? Do you have another job that pay, can pay me? People Fund is going to look at the same thing. The banks are going to look at that. What are you making that you can service the debt until you are able to pay this? They don't look at this for future. And the SBA doesn't look at what you're going to make in the future. They want to know, can you service that now? So if you have a cash flow of $1,000 a month, well, okay, is that anything else is going? Do you have emergency funds or whatever, or savings? Then that's what you're going to be getting as a loan. If you're doing 1000 okay, we can do 800 or 750 Make sense? They're not going to do your projections. They want to know everybody's income and what are you cash for? So this means you've got to bring all of your cost down like you do for a mortgage in order for you to get money out of it. Okay, go ahead. So trucking, you only file, file annually and not quarterly? Because I have another business, you have another business mm -hmm. and you file quarterly. Okay. So with trucking, it's just basically annually? You, you, this is for the taxes. Right. Yeah, for the federal taxes. Mm -hmm. This is not the payroll and the, the quarterly uh, justice that you oh, pay. Okay. Yeah, this is the annual that you have to pay. Mm -hmm. And what even Love Fund and what we do as we lend, we look for what the cash flow is. The SBA policy is they're only going to lend you on what you cash flow. So, yes, and I, I'm known uh, the SBA coordinator here, uh, the district uh, director. He said, yes, it is. We're going to make it easy for you, but they're going to have to do some work just like they do for a mortgage. Remember, these are the same principles that they guarantee in this amount. Yeah, you're guaranteeing it, but they guarantee on the same level. Remember, who owns the biggest mortgage guarantees here? The government. It's the same on the writing policy from Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, SBA is the same thing. You have to cash for that loan. Okay. Not what you see on your financials in the future. The only time they are taking an account if you have a government contract. Mm -hmm. Okay, they'll take that because it's them paying you. Once so you perform, so, yeah. yeah, it's not really guaranteed, but they say, okay, I'll be giving him the contract or her the contract. Yeah, we're, we're a good customer. We're going to pay on time, so we're, we're good. That's the only exception they would make with you. If you had, you're a federal contractor, then yes. And as long as you don't have any issues, you've been, you had a contract for six months, yes, we can take that. Because you have proven that you, you're doing well. The contractor officer say you're doing, you're performing. That's all they want to hear. That is the only exception. Okay. So we'll kind of go through, I'm using this check sheet. Uh, let me post it in the chat real quick. Any questions regarding the entity itself? Yeah, this is for Texas, for the entity. Uh, some states are less. They charge you less at one end um, at $50. However, you pay, you make up on your annual taxes. Texas don't have a state income tax, so they want to collect it at the very beginning because you might never pay. Other states like Denver, they, it's $50, but you pay state and in, uh, income taxes along with your federal income taxes. So they're getting money. You still come out the same way. We just doing a little bit more. And believe me, sophisticated and rich people do not pay taxes at all. So just accept that as a way of life. They never will. And there's no way you can do it because they have people to work on that 24 hours a day. They don't pay taxes. Okay, what you would do? You're you know, unless you have a contract, you zero everything out, expense everything out. Yeah. Have a person who has a dealership. He expense. He got cars for his his kids, his family, mom and dad. And I said, how can you be a Chevrolet dealership and you make only uh, ten thousand dollars a year and you make it almost ten million dollars a year? 
Well, <laughs> well, mom and dad has a car and they pay the, and they go and use the gas car. And my daughter, my kids, they're teenagers, so they drive in the suburbans and, and they have the gas car. So we expense everything out. Trips. Yeah, yeah. I know we, we had to have a trip to Paris because we need to work on this deal. And we you know, so, now we have a trip to the Bahamas because we have a, to go to the banking conference. We think these banking conference, maybe conferences are in all these places for them. They just look at it. Does it really make sense to have something in Hawaii and it's hard to get to Hawaii? <laughs> that costs a two or three thousand dollars. That's why they have it there because. They're going to pay to go there because they go on a vacation. Yeah. And they're going to meet like what we have here for like eight hours. That satisfy what the rules said. And then they just enjoy the rest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, on this check sheet, give me a second. Uh, online people. Uh, check. Give me a second. So any questions regarding the NFT itself that you have to do it, we will help you with it. Uh, also, uh, we have a class that will walk you through and you can actually fill it out and you can do it online over the weekend and it'll be ready on Monday. I mean, if you do it on Monday, if you, as long as you do it by two o'clock, you get it the same day. Within a few hours, your corporation paper's back. And if you do it after two o'clock, then you might get the morning around eight o'clock. So is that quick here in Texas? Everything they like it online before they unlike it. Like the fax it. You know, have time to do all that fax and stuff. Do people do that still? Mm -hmm. Some people do. Mm -hmm. Some people at school are still fax. I say fax. Mm -hmm. The state will still take the fax. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, so on the business entity, we're going to show it right here. I know it's backwards. I'm sorry, but I sent it out again. So I'm talking about the business entity. Again, you're you need to be an LLC. Now you also can be a subchapter S. You can be a regular corporation, and with a regular corporation, you can file a subchapter S as a designation to lower your taxes. Now, if you're LLC, uh, S, subchapter S. You fill out that form. You don't. Yeah, you don't have to uh, pay self-employment tax because it's a true pass-through. The taxes are less. You don't have to pay that subcontractors. No, no. This is for some people pay uh, like inheritance tax. They pay a self-employment. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your return comes out that way. You don't have to do that if you're actually a true subchapter S corporation filing. Mm -hmm. So even for LLC, you still do the same thing. Because okay. you finally you pay tax less taxes. Okay. okay. So after you get your entity from the state, you want to go and it's free. Make sure that it says irs.gov. You go online and you within five minutes, mm -hmm. or this the time that it takes for you to fill out the form, you get your number. Take a picture with it on your phone and do a PDF of that page. Now, within trucking, sometimes during the pandemic, it slows the number down mm -hmm. uh, because they have to code it correctly because they want to make sure they can track you correctly, uh, what type of trucking you want to do. And you specialize. My last business was in hazmat. Now, my family um, kind of go off the sense on the EIN number. I'm going to go back to the EIN number. Make sure you take a picture of when you get that number. Okay, online. Make sure you make a PDF of that page because they'll send it to you later. Or just in case you don't get it, some of the banks want you to have that that copy. Okay, so just save it. At, you know, if you print it like a regular print, print it as a PDF. So the bank asks you that for an audit reason, and it's rarely that they ask for it, but you never know. If we get another bomb and whatever, they're going to ask you. They start restricting stuff again. They want to verify that you're complying with the IRS. Okay. Okay. Uh, DOT and NC numbers. If you're a hotshot, you really don't really need it unless you have a fleet. And if you have a fleet, then you want to try to get an uh, MC number for your fleet itself. Um, DOT. If you know, if you have a, like a large truck, like uh, no, yeah, a semi truck or something like that, you have to have a DOT DOT number in that truck. Okay. 
Um, yeah. I try to use it to go on that website that pulled up. Mm -hmm. Keep saying it's unavailable. I Sometimes they on the weekends, this only happens on the weekends when they're uploading things. Sometimes during the day, because even in this class on Saturdays when I've had in the past, we can go to the, the government websites because they they do this on the weekend. I, I, I try to do it in the week. Yeah, you should have a problem. Make sure it says dot gov. Just call them up. Yeah, they give it to you on the phone as well. <laughs> but if you can get through, it's gonna be a long way. But yeah, you should be able to get it online. The only thing is I've seen during the pandemic. They slow down truckers for some reason uh, because they want to know exactly what you do, what type hauling you're doing. Because I don't know if they're monitoring or what or just slow about it. But the last uh, trucking company we had, it took us a while, and I had to trick the system to get me a number because I needed the number uh, because we were in the process of doing our authority. I needed the number, and they said, "Have you had the number yet?" Well, you become active in in a, in a couple of weeks. You had to be 21 days. It took them almost 21 days of me holding with the system to just get me a number. I don't care where it is, just get me a number. And I finally got the number uh, by playing with it several times because it kept hanging me up. Uh, sometimes they do that. They wouldn't answer the phones in that time either. So it didn't really help because everybody was at home. Okay. So, you know, you, you know, dump trucks, you know, all that stuff on there. What's important, what he said is true. You are, as a trucker, I'd rather stop a trucker than versus a car. How much I'm going to get out of it is an individual. What the individual is going to do. Okay, the individual, I'm going to get a $200 ticket for Arlington. And if you see them parked over here at 20. Okay, which one I'm going to get? I have a quota. You know, it's not really, the city has a quota. I mean, it's not really blaming them. They want their taxing agency. And, it helps for all these services that you get here. But they prefer this to stop a trucker because instead of getting a $200 ticket that someone's going to end up fighting and they get mad enough or their brother and sister or cousin or aunt is on city council, they start complaining and putting pressure on that. This is the world the way the world is. The trucker instantly I have a $1,000 ticket. Let me find something else. Ooh, let me hit that tire. And they just take their time. They might be on your truck for a whole hour and you just behind. There's nothing you can do. Okay, you can't move that truck until it gets changed. I mean, literally the truck has to be there until you get someone to go change that tire. Wow. So uh, it's not just putting air in the tire. We need to have someone and you can't move until they, and what else are they going to charge you? So they finished writing a two or three thousand dollar ticket. Yes. <laughs> they made a sale. Mm -hmm. How many cars I'm going to stop and get cursed at and everything else as a police officer? And I just do this one truck, a couple of trucks, and I'm, I'm made for the month. So without hassle. What is an option? What you can do if you get a ticket? You know, we heard of legal shield. Legal shield has a traffic attorneys that uh, could, you know, with the, the, the retainer you pay them every single month. Uh, they can actually fight that ticket for you or reduce the ticket to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So they kind of ins additional insurance policy they have. Um, on the BOC three filings, uh, I'm just going at mm -hmm. random as a check sheet. I'm sorry on the chat. But the BOC three filings, the insurance company will file that for you. So you don't have to worry about that. And once you get a commercial insurance, they will file that form for you. Um, Okay, if, uh, if you cross state lines, you have to fill the IFA report out. Okay, if you don't cross state lines, you don't. Okay, you don't have to do that. That's when you have to do every quarter of fuel and your where you went. How many miles they went and what the fuel, I mean, what fuel was it? And um, you don't pay taxes only, you just have to file them. Okay. Uh, anybody doing long haul? None? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, let me go to the sheet. Let me see if I can get this uh, geared up. Okay. Now I'm going through the sheet here. Uh, I'll do, I get the slide up. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, here it is. Okay, let's get to the show here. Okay, so pretty much we've done the introduction. Marin spoke. Uh, we're go through this talk uh, a little about legal. We talked about that. That's why I like to talk a little bit longer, thirty minutes longer. Um, so you can kind of absorb with you. The insurance ducks spend a lot of time on the insurance. Um, I'm going to talk about the running the trucking businesses and the two that we had. Uh, originally, my uh, in the old days, you remember, uh, what's that song? Keep it easy of the 70s and 60s. A lot of opportunities. People didn't really finish high school during that time either. I mean, that's like an optional. And so really to the 80s, it was optional to finish high school. You really didn't have to. That's why people so parents were so proud of grandparents. They saw some of them went to the fourth grade uh, and some successful business people only went to the fourth grade. The uh, Nebraska Punish, you heard of her? Mm -hmm. She went to the fourth grade. A lot of these businesses here in Texas, a lot of these people worked on farms. I mean, they, mm -hmm. you know, they were adults like at 12. I mean, kids start to work at six or seven as long as they can do the field work. That was our economy. That was our world during that time. And that has been always until just recently, until when things got a little bit more sophisticated with suburbs of, of the, the sevens. What I'm saying is that a lot of people didn't finish high school. They actually became truck drivers because they, they earn a lot of money. Can you imagine being, people were getting married at 12 and 13 years old? It's not common. If you're in Louisiana, you got married at 12 and 13 years old. You're grown. Okay. Mexico? No, they got married. What do you think the kids here? Okay. It's time to get out. <laughs> you need to marry. You have a lot of daughters. Think of what the dad wants to do is marry out his daughters because he has his pocketbook. He don't have to worry about that. And the sons, they're on their own. Uh, but remember, this is only pretty recently. So as uh, minorities, as uh, people in rural areas in the country, if you didn't finish high school, you had to get a trade. That's why some became plumbers, mm -hmm. electricians, uh, construction workers, truckers. Why truckers? Because the only thing they need is a truck. And if you want to drive whatever across the country, imagine the money that you brought in. I'm telling you $300 was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They made more than that. Someone made $1,000 a week in the 70s, which still $1,000 a week, it's not as much today, but that's still a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They're making, on average, the regular trucker $20,000 a month. Okay. So, in the sense of that, that was the opportunity when we had our trucking company. My dad had worked a regular job, we had a trucking company. And at the very end, I ended up heading up the trucking company for years until we sold it off by a competitor. Well, you will notice during this time that companies, especially during recession, wants to merge. They don't want to have to work for the contracts. They rather just buy you for the contracts. So even the, the trucking company that I partnered with someone um, two years ago has met for fuel. We were going to expand. We were in San Antonio. We were hauling gasoline for Circle K, uh, for some other, uh, Valero. They make their own gas. They have their own refineries, but they don't pull their own trucks. They can't support that those many trucks and those gas stations. So they have truck drivers to do that. The insurance is a lot more money because it's happening. You have to have five million dollar policy, and uh, taking that after one year, one company in Houston wanted to buy it because they didn't want to have to work for it. So we already had the drivers, we already had the trucks, and he said, "Well, how much you want for it?" I said, "I'm not going to be greedy. I'm going to give you this amount. Main thing I want you to do is buy all the equipment first, and then we come up with a separate amount for this amount, and we're happy." Uh, my partner, he can go with you, um, and you can expand all you want. You have the capacity because they are hauling gas. They're hauling gas, liquid gas. Yeah. So they already have a hazard. They already have lower insurance anyway. Hauling gasoline won't be any difference because they are doing serious liquid gas as it is. So they say, "Yeah, we'll buy it." And I say, "I'm not going to be greedy." I mean, I just want to get a, my return out of it so I can put in retirement. And within a year, we got it settled. We started negotiating in April, and everything was sold off by April, August 1 of last year. It has been. If I was going to be this in the next five years. 
A while ago, it kind of worked out because the guy died. My partner, who's been in the field for 40 years, contracted COVID. He already was diabetic, insulin dependent. He caught COVID because he's always in you know rural areas because he's from a small uh, country town. And he got COVID and died. This is two months after closing. So you no, know, he was a friend. I dodged the bullet because I'm here in my office. I'm not in San Antonio. Um, and I would have to be there in San Antonio. Even he wasn't in San Antonio, he was in Granbury. Uh, and he ran the business from there. And But I didn't have enough depth in dealing with, uh, I already had all the business part of it, the contracts, I did all the, the administ administration of it. Only thing I had to do is put out fires between him and dealing with drivers. Uh, and that's what you're going to have, like everybody else. I had a problem with yesterday and trying to get catering delivered here, like I used to do. I had to go get the food. I have to wait for them to prepare. They even didn't answer the phone. And I just went over to Subway. I said, Well, you used to get Subway. I'm the only person here working. Went to Panera Bread. There's only three people working at Panera Bread. And they said in the sign there, Hey, we, we can't help you until you know, we're shorthanded. That's what we were facing today. And you have an employee, so when you have an employee, you're really going to have to cherish that and manage them because uh, drivers are babies. <laughs> <laughs> They're like children. Even they're making, some guys say, you make making $3,000 a week. Why are you complaining about it? They got to have something to complain about, three or $4,000 a week making more than I'm making because I'm giving them 70% and I'm giving 30%, but then they complain. They're making, no, $5,000 a week. Some make $10,000 a week, making way more than I'm getting, and they just complain. And I had to sit there and listen to it at 11 o'clock at night. What happened with a partner, he and the son would take care of them. But uh, I'm glad that I did sell at, at that time because he wanted to expand and said, great. So those are things that you're going to deal with. And the biggest issues you're going to have is employees. Yes, the employees that truck drivers or baby don't care how much you pay them and supervise them. They don't even want to listen to their own supervisor. Can See, that's why you have a supervisor for them. No, they, they go to you because they want to complain. But the employees today are a lot different. And if you can see the shortage around this servicing us, you can see why. Because they don't have to work. Okay, so back to the, the handout. Uh, trucking is the most pro profitable, but also understanding that you can actually get a truck today and drive off and start making money right away. Someone had a question on how can I find contracts? As simple as going calling those large carriers, yellow, all of the carriers that you can call and say, hey, I'm a new carrier, I'm in business, I've been in. I've uh, been driving trucks for seven years or 10 years, some 20 years, and uh, I want to get into the business. Can you help me out? Magic word. Can you help me out? They will give you a chance. Please perform well when you do that because they're not going to give you a lot at the beginning. They're going to slowly ramp you up to see what your capacity is. We had 10 trucks. It seemed like a lot of trucks. It's not a lot of trucks when you're hauling fuel 24 hours a day. Um, my people get at the uh, terminals at two and three o'clock in the morning to get in line, to make sure we didn't run out of gas. They would really say, because then they can guarantee what they're going to make for the day. So some of them get like at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning and they get off maybe like at seven o'clock at night because they have to do all four or five deliveries um, in that area. And with, when they go to the terminals, they put the code in that tells you what customer, how much they order for that, that gas station. Mm -hmm. And they go there first because they don't want to run out of gas. And if it's disruption, they're going to be there one o'clock in the morning to make sure they get their gas because they they dependent on that money. They might not spend it well, but they depend on it. So you can make money from the get-go from the day that you have a truck. And all you do is just be nice and polite and ask them to help you out and they will give you a chance. Then they're testing your capacity. They're, not, they're testing you as how you can service your issues, but they're testing your capacity. You say you have one truck, they can't give you a whole lot. 
you're going to have to get another truck. So maybe you drive this first truck, get an employee to take that truck from you. Then you go into the second truck, get that employee to take that truck from you. And once you have two or three, then you need to just handle dispatch and issues. Okay. Or if the truck driver, I mean, uh, the trucker gets sick, like COVID, eventually some truck drivers are going to get COVID, but they're going to, they have so money, not to say money, uh, thirsty, like JR Union said back in the day. Uh, but that money of getting that much a week, that drives them to work five and six, I mean, I mean, five or six days a week because they're making so much money and they're just used to it. They, you know, some of them um, spend it recklessly, some of them spend it a lot, but it's just having that money, you know, a check you get every single week and you pay them every single week. And I can tell you, it's a, it's a pain and paying people every single week than twice a month. But that industry, truckers, expect to get paid every single week. Okay. Um, let's go to the next slide. The authority we talked about, if you're going to expand, you need to have an authority. Authority will allow you to add other independent contractors to you. You can't do it any other way. You have to have that authority. You will have care of the insurance. You can build the insurance to that, that driver, put the cost in, say, hey, I paid the insurance and the gasoline costs, or you can have them to buy their own gasoline, but you still gonna have to charge them the, the, uh, uh, the insurance, okay? You can have, you can expand your trucks very carefully. Take your time when you expand. Don't take a lot of truckers at the same time. Take maybe one or two so you know what their personality is because remember, they're babies, okay? Because they're babies, they're your children, and you understand they're going to be your children. And you have to think just like you have children in your family, you got to treat them the same way and kind of outthink them before they start having tantrums. So, um, no, I'm just not being facetious. I'm just telling you <laughs> this is how they are. If you have a regular business, you have drama, but you have drama because, again, these guys are working hard. They are working long hours and they're driving long distances. Some of them are driving 300 uh, miles in you know, one way and coming back. They're, they're driving almost 1,000 miles a day for you. So they are going to be a little moody. Okay. Maybe the only job they're still babies. Yeah, they're still babies. And they, they're local. It's, what's, what's up with dirt? <laughs> so uh, step one and the importance of getting your, your CDL. You should have your CDL. But understand if you do get your CDL, if you get a traffic ticket, you held to the same standards as a professional driver, even if you're a residential car. Make sense? So get your CDL because you never know. The insurance company take this part of the risk. They look at your driving history as well because you might have to go drive that truck to park it somewhere. So it's whether that you get your CDL. Now, if you have a person who's making under $16 an hour in the state of Texas, Texas workforce will pay for that training for that employee. So if you get a fresh kid out of high school, like we just had a volunteer here earlier, I have volunteers all the time. And the kid, you know, I, I say, hey, let's get a train. If you want to make money fast, you make more than the college kid. Honestly, you do. If you go to college, you're not getting, when I got to college, I made $18,000 a year. The truck driver was still making 60 in 1989. So the trace will still make more than the person that works a regular job, unless you're an executive of that company. But plump, these specialized training jobs make more than the average person working in an office. But if you do get a CDL, you can be held to the same standards. So if you get stopped uh, in your residential car and they, you pull out your, your drivers, they still gonna hold you to the same standard. You still get a $200 ticket, but then that's a point. So you have to go fight it. And the points you have to go fight it because it's a point system with the driver's record and you go down you go adding those points up then you get suspended from your mean driving period so with us we can we our points don't hold as much value as just a regular commercial not as a residential driver or consumer driver but a professional driver you have the same standards and those points will still add up and automatically they will take your driver's license suspended. So you have to fight your ticket if you do that. 
Okay. So Texas workforce force will take anyone under sixteen dollars an hour unemployed and pay for that training for them. And you want to get them light duty and have them shadow with somebody else to learn the ins and outs, how to do your pre-inspections or every time you drive, beginning of the day and end of the day. You need to fill that form out. Okay. Now, one thing came up is before you keep keep trucking has the camera that you put in your truck. You need to have it. Now, I, I didn't want to inspire my own people. I did not do the two-way camera, I only did the one-way camera. Uh, some cases, even with hazmat, I say, no, nah, I don't want to look at them. You know, I want them to keep their personal time to themselves. I don't want to see what they're doing inside the truck. Okay, just show me what's happening in front. So keep trucking, turn into MOVE, M-O-V, uh, M-O-T-I-V-E. Just changed, I think, some time ago. Just changed. Yeah, because I had it at the end of the year because I just paid the last bill in September. So keep trucking is a camera that, that you install in the truck. It, it tracks the speeding, give you a real-time record, and then you actually see the real-time video in their app. The app will go on their phones. You can log into the desktop and you can see exactly what they're doing. You can check their driving because it's plugged into the system. You can see how they brake. If they're speeding, you can see their record. Same thing that they give you with discounts in your regular car, but they can see exactly what's happening. So this is the best investment you can ever make because it keeps them safe, keeps you safe, and keeps you compliant. And you know what, exactly what happened. So if you know, if you're looking at the app and all of a sudden, hey, you have a lot of heartbreaking. You want to slow things down, okay? You don't want to hurt me. Number two, when you tell them the story regarding the guy having an accident and hit somebody. And I don't know why anybody in the world want to get hit by 18 wheeler. I mean, you're just, you're asking to be maimed. There's nothing worse to be young or 40 years old and you can't walk or you're, you know, part of police, you know. It's, I mean, you're really taking a chance. You just rather jump off the bridge and, and take your chances. That is the same way. These trucks are driving me, it's pulling 60 to 70,000 pounds that can literally crush you. And remember in the old days that they, people used to stop in a truck, they go right under the truck and they put that brace on. You know, we were taking our chances in, the, in those days that if they didn't have that brace on, we would drive right on the truck and our head is coming right off. We're gone like that. This way, they hit you on the front or the side. You don't have a chance. You, know, you yeah, you'll survive, but you'll be maimed. Who wants to do that? That's why they get these $50 million settlements, but they can't walk or do anything. They're dependent. And what's going to happen if you're a young guy and you're a young girl? If she really loves you, you'll find out. <laughs> quick. Really quick. Because I've, I've seen it. In the last 30 years, one single case that this guy got this big settlement, when she got settlement, the girl left him, um, left him, took, they're married. She took a majority of the money that's left enough for him to live on. They got $5 million. She took four, gave him a million, and gave it to the custody of uh, his sister to take care of the rest of his life off a of million dollars. So... Again, can't you really? No, they're young. These 20 year olds. Okay. Have a plan. We talked about that in depth. He showed you how to do your plan. Well, I tell sport uh, people do not stress on these plans because some people will take months in doing their plans. Go hire someone off of um, Upwork, thank you. Hire them, say, hey, this is what I want. I still do it today because I don't feel like writing it. I say, this is what I want. They get it to me in five days for $250. What is worth your time? Is it $250 or $300 to pay someone to go do that and have it neatly and all I had to do is do the financials? Have score and help you with the financials and have them to do all the other stuff. Or have score do the bulk of the stuff for you and you send it to them and they make it nice and pretty for you. Don't spend your time and energy on kind of forcing yourself to write a business plan and it overwhelms you. Okay. Yeah, just put in, hey, I want, I'm paying $300. I need someone to write. 
you have PhD students have to do so many business plans and some of the proposals. So that's why it's cheaper. It's not a thousand, three hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars give you a little bit better. Don't stress yourself with it, okay? Because I've seen this paralyze people and try to get this done. You can do this little nine step thing, write it out, and they'll do all the stuff for you. And they'll do the research and stuff like that. So do not stress yourself with it because a lot of people stress themselves with this. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. So just at work? Upward. Okay. Yeah, upward better because you have the PhD students or the MBA students. Usually I get an MBA person that wants to take because they have to do so much and had to show the college sure. professor they did so many. Okay, you can, so already talked at step three. Yeah, have score do the bulk of it because if we won't write it for you, we'll tell you and we can judge it. And if you feel like you're getting paralyzed and you can't do it in two weekends, resource it. That's why we have a world economy today. Okay, do not stress yourself out on it. Go work on making money than versus working on doing it. You have a question? Yes, um, on the motive and the dash camera, is that an app that I can put on their- It's an app, it's a desktop thing, so you don't log in to see what they're doing. It's an app that they're gonna check in to when they start their day, it's like, like a timesheet. It shows when they, uh, they checked in, it takes a picture mm -hmm. of what's in front of them, it, it also won't click for 10 minutes until they do their pre-inspection. And they got that knowledge that they did their pre-inspection. Pre-inspection is walking around, okay? Just like the beginning of the day and the end of the day, checking the tires, checking the license plate, checking the lights, checking to make sure the windshield wipers, checking to make sure there's no, uh, any lights that comes on the dashboard, they can't be in service, they can get a ticket for it, okay? Mm -hmm. Making sure the brakes are clean, making sure they do that, pre-check sheet at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So when they sign in, it would not approve them for 10 minutes until they do that, 10 to 15 minutes. Is that an app on you, their phone? In the, in the is that app on their phone, but it, it links straight to the desktop, the web. And is it for keep trucking or is this different? Hmm? It's keep trucking, yeah, they changed the name. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the camera. Okay. The camera does the same thing. That's okay. what they're gonna check in on. Okay. So if you wanna know what time they started, yeah. They click check. Okay. I'm here, and they said, "Okay, they have 15 minutes to do their inspection." Okay. And okay. they will not move beyond that until they finish the inspection. Okay. Now I can't physically walk with them. Yeah. But the idea is for them to have enough 15 minutes, and they can go. I had some who smoked, uh -huh. and then anything else, and we know that's what he did. Um, but at the the next person who comes in a truck, they do the same thing inspection. Okay. They cannot start their day without doing that pre-inspection. He told you about okay. the tires, he told you about the sweeper. That happens on anything. The mud can come on your, your lights and they'll stop you for it. Mm -hmm. But it's a chance for them to check everything to make sure it's working. And the next person comes on who takes on that truck does the same thing. Okay. Like we had two shifts, one would finish at four o'clock if he finished early, uh, cause he might just have one trip, but the trip is 300 miles and it takes him pretty much eight hours or nine hours to get back. Mm -hmm. Then another person will take care for the night shift. So that person does the same inspection. So that eliminates any issues that we have. We know that that sound on those tires not correct, the windshield wipers doesn't work. It wouldn't be caught between those two inspections. And that's the goal of it. And also it the camera turns on so you can see what's happening all day long, what's happening. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Is that part of the ELD? Yes, it's connected to ELD. Thank you for mentioning that. So it is the ELD. Yeah. yeah. So you can do your logs. Yeah. Okay. Your logs. okay. Okay. So uh, I think I spent enough time on the LLCs and the corporation. A uh, corporation LLC is a hybrid of a partnership and a corporation. You do not want to be a partnership. Only partnerships they have here today there are industry protects attorneys. They can defend themselves, right? Doctors make a lot of money. They can defend themselves, right? Architects can defend themselves. Engineering defend themselves. Not only engineers defend themselves, the association defends them because they don't want something to become president out of a lawsuit. So their interest of every lawsuit in this country to make sure it does not translate to hurt them in the industry. Okay, 
Even the church does the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, they protect their own. It's a it's a fraternity. Okay, sorry. Startup expenses, you need to be honest with yourself, and I'll show you a, a website to go to. You can go to applecapital.com. And there is a, a form on there that's, uh, that you can use. Second. Um, that you can use to calculate what your startup expenses are. And it is under sure if you haven't done this in a while. Let me use these touch screen things. Okay, truck has. Truck budget planner. Okay. You see my face on it. It's not a nonprofit. So go under the equipment leasing. And then you see truck budget planner. I'm sorry I cannot get this thing to work. Um, but in the, in the truck budget planner, I'm going to put this on the screen for the other people uh, so they can see. So I'm going to type this and I'll write it on the board for you. Say how much first line is. Uh, how much revenue will this truck generate? Okay, this to typically most of them make twenty thousand dollars a month. Yes. Okay, has made we get like sixty for a person even for a truck. Mm -hmm. So twenty. That's usually what the average they do for uh, trucker. Okay, your fuel is going to be your biggest expense. Okay, okay? so your fuel. Uh, let's say you truck payment. Okay, it's fifteen hundred dollars. Take it on the high end with the new truck. Okay, then let's say your fuel. Let's put on um, four. Usually it's like eight hundred dollars a week. Let's do like four thousand dollars. That's pretty good. And your driver and insurance. <laughs> I was getting there. <laughs> uh, insurance yeah, about two thousand. Driver. Pay the driver as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even their babies do not underpay them because they already know. They all talk. Yeah, yeah, every time they start <laughs> somewhere, they talk to each other. Yeah. Okay. It's not like you getting paid. Now they're going to lie about it, yeah. but if they know that this person got paid, okay, take a thousand dollars off or two thousand. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not getting paid. I'm going to start complaining. So this is what they do. So, you know, pay them like 50 or 60 thousand dollars a year. Okay. Okay. So let's say it's five thousand. Okay. What is that number? Four, 10, 12. Is it 12? Yeah. 10, 12. Yeah. That's what my expenses is. I have my account in maintenance. Okay. Maintenance you can get on the truck. Uh, if your local is great, long distance might have worked. Okay. So if your maintenance, let's say thousand budget, thousand dollars a month, tires, whatever. So you're at 13. You know what? How much you make it? Twenty thousand thirteen. So you see what you what your net profit. Is. Okay, that's still good for one truck. Imagine if you had ten. And this just average your own freight. Okay, as Matt, we did fifteen, sixteen per truck. You make it a lot more. Our driver paying like five thousand dollars, and on weekly, I, and I end up even to the point. I mailed a lot of my drivers overnight checks. I went and when I started, I deposited my care at BBVA. I went that extra effort to make sure they got paid on time. I said, hey, I'm gonna put it in your, your bank account. Might be that day, but I, and I go and take a picture of it. You can show that i made. They like that, took the extra effort to make sure they got paid on time. Even I was here, um, and so I got, we got set up with ADP. We got a provider that can pay them every single week. Yeah, it was a headache, but it, it worked. And ADP, what's so good about ADP, you can actually process that payroll before two o'clock and they get paid that day. Okay. So they get paid right at 11 o'clock. 
um, what they do is actually give you a line of credit anyway, mm -hmm. and they they front you the money and they get it back the next day. They actually pull those lines the same day. Mm -hmm. So I think they give you to two o'clock. This is Thursday, you get paid every Friday. So mm -hmm. I have up to like, technically say we have four o'clock, we want to make sure you get that. Mm -hmm. But typically two or three o'clock, they say, hey, our real cutoff is four o'clock, but never do that because something can happen and you're stuck out. You can't go beyond that. Try to get in like at two o'clock is fine. Most people get it done by two o'clock. And they get paid still 11 o'clock Eastern time. I mean, Eastern time at midnight, they get in that account, they start seeing it here at 11 o'clock at night. They check for the next day. Yeah. Does ADP do factor in those? Sir? No, I'm going to get to that as well. Okay. So this is kind of typical, and this hasn't changed. The fuel pretty much hasn't changed. The driver hasn't changed. The insurance has changed. Insurance is going to be more than 1,000? No, you drive 5,000. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 60,000 a year. Oh. Uh, independent contractors, um, you're doing a 70, 60, I mean 70, 30 split with them or a 60, 40 split. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but they're paying for their own food. You're giving them um, the gross um, minus what the insurance is. Okay. This is one of Hmm? I'm sorry, say that one more time. So you for the independent contractors that you're okay. adding on, yes. and the independent contractors, some of them will work six days a week, yeah. uh, even seven. Now they do it by legal, okay. but some of them will do six days a week. Okay. So what happened is you're doing the revenue share. So some of them like in, for hazmat, the industry is 70, 30. Oh, okay. Uh, some in general is 60, 40, but hazmat, they make a lot. So they know they're making Okay. So back for the people who are online, what we did is twenty thousand dollars, and we did how much is your your payment is? We did like fifteen, and then this 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 uh, form online it calculates for you. You say five thousand dollars for the driver, fuel cost we said four thousand dollars, insurance payment two thousand dollars, month and a thousand for maintenance, and then online as you can see your net profit right here came to be like sixty five hundred. Um, so that's your profit to you, to your company. And that's on the Apple. Yeah, applecapitalgroup.com. Mm -hmm. And it's see. under equipment financing. Okay, that's what I'm saying. And let's look for truck budget plan. Okay. Okay, let me find the, oh, how to get to model. Thanks for online people for being patient. Um, I should have other people to help me a second. Let me make this down. Okay. This part won't go, go that long. Okay. This one. Slideshow. Okay. Startup expenses. We talked about that. Be honest with yourself. What the true cost of it? Yes, if you bring the independent contractors out, you know you don't pay for their fuel. You just revenue sharing. The only thing is that you bill them for their portion of the insurance. And you just say, hey, this is the insurance. This is what it charges. As we get better records over the year, your most expensive years are two years. Once you get two years on your belt, your expenses for your insurance to come down. As long as your, uh, uh, your score ratings uh, are good. And those are public records. Okay, um, business operation, um, ADP uh, will give you three months free, is worth the investment, is worth the time that it takes, is really easy to use, and you can actually uh, have the money to the account every Friday for truckers, that's what they used to get paid. You can do, you can wait till three o'clock in the afternoon the day before and press, put their payroll in for ADP. They still get paid, uh, paid at 11 o'clock Central Time. Because ADP will put it in everybody's account. And they'll bill you the next day or the next day out. Later. Okay. Um, I already talked about the camera, the uh, already talked about EDS, the electronic logs, payroll. 
you must get workman's comp. I'm gonna tell you, uh, I'll write through some issues with some clients here on workman's comp. Why this is important. If they get in an accident or hurt themselves or fall down, they're gonna, regardless, they're gonna, you the employer, even if they're an independent contractor, you're not responsible to get it, just list them. And I'm gonna tell you why. State of Texas really don't care. They wanna, the only time they care about it is if you're not paying it and it has to now cost them. That's what it boils down to. Either Texas is gonna pay it, and they're gonna come after you. Well, is he, did they give you a schedule every day? Well, yes. I'm an independent driver. Then they would say I'm an independent driver if they're hurt. It's our more responsibility to take care of the employees. Okay. We do right by them, they do right by us. Okay, that's what we're gonna count on. But Texas, down the street here in Fort Worth, will come to your office and tell you to write them a check or we'll freeze your account. That's how bad they will get with you. Now you're costing the state of Texas on something you should have done at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Get the insurance. It's not that much. If they get hurt, even your independent contractor, no, he's an employee. Because technically, if you give them a schedule every single week, according to the IRS guidelines, they are an employee. You gave them a schedule. Mm -hmm. You didn't give them an option to get out the schedule. Are you going to give someone a load? Oh, you don't have to take the load. Why are you going to do that? You're wasting your time, right? They are an employee. So treat them as such. Now, you might pay them as a contractor. You might need to get that cost out of them or let them know. Say, hey, we're billing you for this. But because I love you, I'm going to make sure that uh, we're paying for the workman's comp if something happens. So they have the surety of mind because they might leave you over that. Okay. If you have insurance, you an association or either have insurance that you can offer them long term. You job is to keep your good employees because I'm telling you, it's hard. We, we have seen this in the last two years. I don't know where all these people went. I was telling this girl that so she's by herself at Subway, by herself in the entire restaurant. Nobody else there with me. I'd be scared if my daughter was there by herself mm -hmm. in this big old building over here. Mm -hmm. uh, even if people keep walking in, mm -hmm. it's not like when school is in session, these kids are here all the time. She's by herself. I said, well, all these workers, and I've been here in this office for almost 10 years. There's like three or four people in there, and it's one person. Yeah. I don't know what everybody went to go work. Um, but anyway, you need to really cover your employees and treat them uh, and have them that same respect back and forth. Say, hey, just tell me something goes on. If you need to tell me out, just tell me, yeah. and we can kind of prepare for it and just have that communication with them. Like one of my uh, uh, office managers, Say, hey, she called me like, so you can call me anytime. It's no big deal. You know, she's like a daughter. So uh, she said, well, I need to go to Mexico two weeks. That's fine. Let's go to Mexico. We are take. We have other people here. Uh, don't feel guilty. Just put me stuff there and we keep them on ice until you get back. And I gave her $500. She said, just go enjoy your family for the next couple of weeks. But she's been with me because I treated her that way for the last seven years. I hired her. When I first met Mari, when I joined school in 20, the summer of 2016, she's been here. And she went somewhere else, especially online. But I uh, told her, to go, no, go work from home when everything shut down. Then they did that. Well, first of all, I'm not going to kill me because they're all 20 something and I'm in the 50s. But say, no, just work home. But that's the way you have to think. You need to really, they're your assets and you need them. And if you've seen everybody else struggle in your airlines as well, that, uh, you need to hold on to your persons. Okay, go ahead. But two questions. <clears throat> the insurance. Mm -hmm. um, do you get it from the Texas uh, Workforce Commission or do you? When you do your insurance court with me, quote, with your agent, mm -hmm. uh, they can quote workman's comp. It's either going to be Texas Mutual or something like that. Oh, okay. So you do it at the same time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you do your commercial, they can do it because it's not that much. It might be like for a quarter. What they do is it's cheap at the very beginning until they, it's based on your payroll. So they will send you a bill after each payroll is filed after each quarter. And then they do a catch up. Say, hey, this is your percentage of that. Mm -hmm. But they tell you what the percentages are. So that's separate from the auto insurance. Yes. You're doing this to protect Thank you sure. because state of Texas will, will freeze your account. I've seen it. Because uh, they want their money right then and there because now you're costing them. 
Do you say okay. Texas Mutual? Texas Mutual is one, but your, your commercial insurance company will take care of it. Say, hey, I need workman's comp. Mm -hmm. That protects you. You've been, you're keeping them uh, honest. And you get those, you know, we don't have medical insurance yet. We have some options going on. You stay with us. We just need to have so many to bring the rates down because the rates are bad. No, it's tough. We get 10 people, whatever, as a group rate, then we can bring these groups rates down. You mean a question? Okay, you mentioned billing. So if you have an owner operator, then you have mm -hmm. several. You can share that with them. They're part of the risk. So when you bill it, well, just... you bill in the insurance. You are building the, the cost. They need to have their own truck. Okay. They're gonna have their own insurance. Okay. But you have to have insurance overall to right. carry as an, uh, as an, having an authority. Yes. So then. Um, so my fiance, it's his truck business. We're working together. Mm -hmm. He has his own authority. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to really build the operations to make it mm -hmm. scalable. So with the, uh, the owner operators that are working under him, he's been saying, no, I don't need the workman's comp. But I'm going to tell, I'm you, understand I'm, I'm tell you, I I helped. We yeah. have to, you know, uh, and it was actually one of our clients. Yeah. And I know Leslie Sweet. Yeah. We used, you know, we hear this thing on TV with the police knock. Yeah. They have the police knock on your door mm -hmm. and they say, I need to see your books. Um, yeah. And you have to open your books. Oh, things are electronic. Okay, I need to see them like now. Mm -hmm. Now. I mean, it's not like you no know, five minutes, no, now, because they want to make sure you're not doctoring mm -hmm. again. Let's go to your computer and I need to look at that, your payroll records. Mm -hmm. ADP gives you the copies every single. Okay. And you can show them, hey, I got workman's comp. And does ADP do they do? Like they, can they just do regular payroll. Yeah. But okay, but so the billing, I think that's where I'm gonna wrap my head around it for external contractors. Is it just a subtract you just subtract it from whatever you're paying them? Like if so, you're billing them for their workman's comp, is that what I'm understanding? No, you just put part of insurance because they, they know they have to pay insurance because it's a general okay. liability for the company itself. Okay. So you billing them on that portion of them on insurance. Bill their portion on the insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're the one that's moving. If you have one truck, you know, they're going to have a large portion of it. Yeah. If you have two trucks, it gets smaller and smaller. Yeah. It's still going to be almost the same thing, but they know that they have to pay the insurance. Okay. 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 They're responsible for their own truck. They're responsible for their own fuel. Okay. 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 If you get employees, you, know, you might want to kind of keep it balanced. You're going to need some employees, uh -huh. but it equals out the same thing because okay. you, you're paying taxes on top of it. But you need that to balance to deal with issues that come up. If they get, if you get in an accident, they become an employee. Okay. They're no longer the state is approving the employee. Okay. The IRS says they're an employee. Okay. The governor says they're an employee because it's easy for them to say an employee. Then what are you going to do? Fight Texas on this one when you get them a schedule? Can do they? Uh, can they turn down a load a day? And your answer is going to be no. And they're going to look at your records. Which is detailed because you have to build the company for it. Mm -hmm. You're building the person who's going to pay you. So mm -hmm. you can't really cheat. And they're going to look at your account and they say, no, print me what, uh, your account. What are you going to do? Say no. You say, okay, you say no. And then they're going to go straight to their office. They have all the bankers online and they're going to send them a writ to uh, let's freeze this account now. And then you have to go fight them in court. I mean, you have no money. No money. All your money that goes to the account is frozen until you get it resolved. And with the state, they don't care. So don't get yourself in that position. Do the right way. Get the, the insurance. Get that. If they want, to, if they want to see that you make the special effort. And this is, doesn't cost. This is not health insurance that you're paying for. It's a workman's comp. Mm -hmm. It's a fraction it's of the pay. Yeah. What is it? What's a normal workman's comp? What is it cost? I don't know. It's a percentage, maybe like two or three percent oh, of okay. their salary that you pay them. Okay. And it averaged out is bill. You tell them an estimate. You're going to tell them a low estimate at the very beginning for you to get started okay. because that's where you have to pay to get started. But what happened is they say, hey, give me the payroll records. That's why I'm using ADP because they're going to give me accurate records. Right. Okay. Because they're going to catch it one way or the other because if they do an audit, the insurance company, and something doesn't balance, look correct. Right. And it doesn't look on, because they look at the computer and they look and see, okay, are you growing or are you having issues? Are you dropping? They can see what the average is. And if it doesn't fit that average, right. then the computer is going to point it out. Okay. Same thing in underwriting for a house. 
underwriting that use the same software, it shows what the trends are. Okay, and it shows what irregularities as the same one. So um, also you want to make sure that you have a uh, maintenance company, like a mechanic on file. Uh, you want to stay local so you can resolve issues locally. Um, there are tire plans you can get with Michelin. Michelin tires are harder, they last longer, but they're more expensive. I'd rather get the tire that's gonna last me longer and do more than a cheaper tire. Because I mean, instead of the cheaper tire, you notice, they don't last. I say, how you guys are, I just bought these tires in three months. Tell me if you need an alignment. Let's take the truck off the road on the Saturday and get the alignment done. That's why you need a mechanic, okay? Mm -hmm. The alignment is going to save those tires longer and longer, and the inspection is going to let you see what the wear is. But you got to get the alignment on a regular basis, not, not like a regular car that's six months. You're driving this truck all day long. You need to make sure you do that like in the extra couple of months to make these tires last. You want them to evenly wear, and versus if it's on the side, you get a ticket for it. And if they're looking at the beginning of the day, during the daytime or shift, you can see that, oh, it's starting to wear here. I need to take care of this like now. Okay, because uh, you know they're driving three or four hundred miles a day, or even more. Yeah. So those are the things that you're gonna need as your operation. You really need to be honest with yourself. Payroll companies, my paychecks, ADP. ADP is the only company that you can pay at the last minute and hit go at three o'clock in the afternoon. You really have to four o'clock. They're telling you don't go to four o'clock because if something happened to your computer, is it? Those people are not getting paid the next day. Doesn't I mean you're begging ADP to do manual checks. They'll do the manual checks, but they're going to charge you for bringing it to your house or to your office. They still will do it, but they're going to print a manual check. Now, if you have people out of the area, this means they had to come to your office to get the check. And they're going to pay a courier. And they're printing in the middle of the night, and then you have it at your business at six o'clock in the morning. They're very good about it, but you're paying that courier $100 to go do that. So I, yeah, it is really worth it because it, it's less hassle. Like I said, I pride myself with, uh, I had to do babysitting, but I made every effort to make sure they get paid on time. I said, the check going to be there. If I had to pay uh, UPS to make sure it's there, they didn't mind, even if it didn't come, they just like the idea of you just take the effort to make sure it's overnight. And some of them did get it on Saturday morning, but it's UPS fault, it was not my fault. Okay. Um, you know, when you, you hire an employee, uh, back to operations. Okay, let me see what this question we have on there. Okay, what is the name of the self employer tax document? You don't need it. It's what happened in the old days. They used to pay, it depends on how your, your, um, uh, and the, the alternative tax came out, the way you file your tax and the way you filled it out, it depends, it, it demands that you pay self employment. Okay. So in this business, you need to have an account to make sure that you balance things correctly because you don't want to show that you made negative, negative, negative by buying equipment, okay? So you can zero your taxes out buying equipment every single year and you pay no taxes. You take your deductions for it. Um, but it depends on the way that form is filled out if you got to pay the self-employment tax. And working with Scott, you can get it from your regular commercial uh, person. Yeah, go ahead. You said something earlier about um, an S Corp that you wouldn't have to pay the self employment tax. Did yeah, you, it's the subchapter S. It's called you subchapter. Like a you just fill out the form. Yeah, yeah. You have to fill it out yeah. within 90 days of the corporation being formed, mm -hmm. or you have up to May, March 15th of every year to do it. So they give you two opportunities. When you form the corporation, yeah. do it the next day. Once you get that, your ID number, uh, you already formed, just fill it out and drop it in the mail. Okay? The only opportunity you have to wait until the beginning of the year, if you don't do it within 90 days, beginning of the year, uh, you have up to postmark March 15th to fill it out. We notice that they don't have to pay the self employment tax. It doesn't calculate that way because it depends how you fill it out. Now, if you have an accountant or you know, a person, tax person doing it, that makes sure that you're done. But in the old days, you have to do it. But it depends on the way that program runs if you have to fill it out. 
But what happened is you pay less taxes because it's, it's a true pass-through. Now, LLC is a pass-through, but without this extra form, you pay less taxes. And if it, if it's a DBA on an LLC, is that? No, that's if like if you want to use another name. Or... It is it's still connected to the corporation, but you want to do it on the state level, not as this level. Because we want to make sure it's recognized at the state. The state, you can call just a 5 young. You can be like, what's your name? Sarita. Sarita. Uh, Sarita Inc. And you can call yourself uh, Bill Gates. Okay. But you want to be Bill Gates at the state filing, not at the mm -hmm. district. I mean, because this only protects you within this county. Okay. This protects you within the whole state. They really, you can call yourself Bill Gates. They don't, they don't follow. They don't really care what you call yourself. You can have duplicate names when the corporation can't have duplicate names in the same corporation. You can't be IBM when this IBM is already here. You can be IBM uh, Sharita or IBM Tim or IBM um, whatever, Arlington, but you can't be the same name. You gotta say, show that as a difference. Okay, uh, one second real quick before we get to compliance. Go ahead. Yeah, one, one more question on the escrow. Mm -hmm. Is you registering with the Texas Workforce Commission? This, this is a federal problem. The S Corp, the, mm -hmm. the S -Corp application is the federal one. This all fed. So it has nothing to do with the, the workforce? No. This uh, workforce commission, yeah. uh, ADP would take care of that for payroll. Okay. So they would report what happened. You have to report every new employee that comes, mm -hmm. but they would do that themselves. So you don't have to register with the employer? No, they would do it for you. Because they're, they're the trustees. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the trustees of the payroll. That's what I mean. They said they collected the taxes for you. Yeah. You're not responsible. They're collecting automatically. Yeah. They are making sure those those funds are done correctly and on time. So you don't have the funds in your account. They take right. those funds and hold them. Right. Okay. So that takes that liability off of you. And if uh, my friend Leslie uh, Sweet sees it, then he'll back off. He'll say, okay, do you have working with snow? Yes. Give me the policy. Do you have payroll? Yes. And he'll just walk out of your office. You won't ask for anything else. When you don't have something you're looking for, then all that he cares about is payroll. Who's on your payroll? Okay. Even if they're on ADP, he knows that people's getting paid on time. But you say, but I paid, I do include the, the independent contractors as well. That's what keep them off of you. Okay. We'll also keep you out of IRS. Um, table if you pay employees. The government makes their money off of payroll taxes. And if you stop paying for payroll, there's a reason why they want everybody to go back to work. Okay. Because they're not getting their check either. Okay. That's what they care about. They see on your tax return, you will not be audited unless you target yourself to be audited for some reason. They will not bother you because they know that, okay, personal pain is pretty obvious. He's paying his people. He has ADP or a paychecks, a reputable company collected the money for them and I would get my money on time. Or they had to pay the penalty, not you, ADP would. And ADP is not paying up any penalty. What you go to jail for, if you hold those funds themselves and you did not pay them and it's not filed timely, you're stealing from the US government and they take it personally. Those are people who go to jail. You'll go to jail faster for that than anything else. Is payroll taxes because you're stealing from the federal government. And what happens to the work paying employees? You have two employees that uh, were just changed to sub contractors mm -hmm. where we don't collect the taxes anymore and we don't pay the taxes anymore. As long as you have work on stop and you have a payroll company documenting that. Mm -hmm. And even um, you're protecting yourself from the state of Texas because it's their money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, you're not responsible. Are you responsible to make sure they get paid on time and you have a payroll records file for left full time? Okay, what are we doing in the payroll ourselves? On which one? What are we do? What are we if we are doing our payroll ourselves? Don't do your payroll yourself. Okay. Pay the company is worth it. Okay. Well, what I just mentioned, what keeps you out of the IRS audits and stuff mm -hmm. is having mm -hmm. ADP or pay paychecks because they know they get their money on time. Mm -hmm. Um, but keeping them off of you, if something goes wrong, we're paying Russian roulette. 
if something goes wrong, you need to have someone that ADP will defend their records. You don't have to do and that. We have uh, quick, quick books, you can say. Quick books is complicated, but I know they have a payroll module. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff to go along with that. They give you the option not to pay. Um, they, I mean, you can keep the, the payroll taxes, but that signal form where you're responsible in filing. Mm -hmm. What keeps you out of audits mm -hmm. is making sure they have the trust of those files. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have problems here, that's what they back off on. If you have those other companies, they have the records. They trust the records of those companies and they trust you. Because mm -hmm. you can manipulate their numbers. Mm -hmm. they're, for payroll protection, there's mm -hmm. no, the numbers. Uh, but you can't manipulate the numbers for that. Mm -hmm. So it's that extra layer of protection for you as a business owner that you don't have to fight with. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the authority is the ability to hire someone under you as an independent contractor. It allows you to expand. They will work harder, but understanding that you need to pass through the insurance with them. So they pay their insurance, they pay their own fuel, and you bill in them for your portion of insurance for your authority. That's on compliance page six, sub six. Okay, next one. Um, when you do an authority, I would recommend OIDA, O O I D A. Okay, Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association. O O I D A. O I D A will fill out. Some people will fill out. We used to do it, and it was too time consuming. They only charged five hundred five hundred dollars to do the authority three from three hundred dollars and up. If we do like hazmat, we have to pay a thousand because we have to have extra things mm -hmm. that needs to be filed for hazmat and for the insurance company. So uh, for three hundred dollars, they would do the authority, they would do the waiting period, and they would guide you through, and they will actually put you in the state system and the federal system uh, for your safety reports and things like that. They will do that for you, okay? And they will just give it to you. Okay? That's if you want to have on operators. I would say it's worth the investment to do that for general play. Um, because you can, if you have something, you can always hire someone to do it. You necessarily can't do that legally or have someone representing you and they don't remember the number has to be on that car a truck they use your number your DOT, your DOT. Mm -hmm. and both. Oh, both and the company name has to be put oh, all that information has to be on, on the name the, the numbers has to be on every car that represents you mm -hmm. yeah. the, the way that best buy got out of it was they have independent trucks that's moving for them. They're, each one is independent. They're not in that same appliance, so they're just doing A to B. They're doing residential. They're going to pick up a fridge, meaning take the refrigerator, pick up a refrigerator, and drop it off. They're, just, they're a courier, pretty much, the hot shot. Why the hot shot costs so much? <laughs> they're hot shots, pretty much. They're taking A to B, and that's it. They're not driving. Something is going to cause an accident. Anybody, you don't need a commercial driver's license for And the customers are they're already having money because you leave the store is paid for. Yeah. That's why it takes a whole week. They're floating the money. Uh uh, I get them means. So I think at the storm last year we had like three refrigerators. I got tired of it in cons. And they finally we just sell it. So forget it. I don't want to wait again. Um the <clears throat> the if attacks, if you drive rock. Out of the state of Texas, you have to file that every quarter. Okay. And I hear anything about anybody's long haul driver here. Long haul drivers know they have to fill it out. Yeah. yeah. So if you dump trucks or you're within the state of Texas, you don't. Okay. If you just go over the county line, you're not supposed to by the plates, but you can if you're just right there at the border. Okay. What's the name of the test? You you gotta file? If, uh, if you're doing long haul. Okay. Um, and the insurance company will stay with you on that as well. A BOC number is filed by the insurance company, so you have to worry about that. 
We already spent a lot of time on insurance. Let's just talk about the trucks and trailers. I'm gonna talk about the difference. You rather buy, what's the difference between a used car and a used car and a new car? Yeah. Yeah, maintenance is number one. Maintenance for a truck is a lot of money. Okay. A tire can cost you $500. One tire and you never, yeah. So $700. That, but you just never need one tire. <laughs> That's if the front tire goes out. You have, if the back is double. So yeah, it's, yeah. So the thing is, you necessarily need to find a truck. The banks want to see five years or less under $600,000, okay? 500, uh, it needs to be, again, 600,000 miles or less, less than five years. Walmart, Target, um, Walmart, Target, they will not allow you to take a truck that's over five years old. If you get a three-year truck, you only can use it on their line for their service for two years. They will tell you at the fifth year because they're tracking it. You got to take it off and you can give it to something else. You need a new truck. If you get a Walmart uh, account, it's best that you just get a brand new truck. Uh, your payments will be lower, your interest rate will be lower, your maintenance is built in for at least a couple of years, so you don't have to worry about it. But they're gonna keep the truck working every single day. If you have a uh, yeah, the truck costs one hundred and fifty thousand, I mean one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, but you, it's a Walmart account. The account is not going anywhere unless you, you mess it up. Okay. But they're telling you once it gets five years, it has to come off of our line. We will not, because maintenance is the issue. It breaks down more. It has more accidents. It has more issues. They don't. They care about to make sure it gets to that designation on time. They don't care how you do it. It needs to get there on time. And they're gonna tell you at the fifth year, if they track it on uh, uh, safer, five years later, it comes off. We don't want it in our service. Okay. Um, so what's the difference between the lease? If you're doing a lot of driving, if you're doing local driving, it's not a big deal of having a, a lease. But the way the industry is, um, I'm gonna do it on the board. Lease and buy. Let's see if I can do it on here. Hopefully. Okay. What's the difference between lease and buy? Okay. So if you finance it and you lease it today for trucks and even equipment, it's really a tax issue. It really doesn't have anything to do with you leasing the buying truck because it comes out the same thing. You can lease this truck and pay a dollar at the end of the lease. Okay. And you can finance it and you can pay zero at the end of the term. What does it mean tax wise? This is what it's boiled down to. Tax wise, the lease is operating, it's a rental. Okay. And someone says, oh, we'll lease. If you're paying a dollar at the end, who cares? Right. Most of them, they're paying a dollar at the end. And in the case of Walmart or Best Buy, I mean, Walmart and Target, you have to take that truck off. I don't need the truck. I can't use the truck in my fleet if I have those contracts. So it comes off. If you can buy it for a dollar, but you can just turn it back in. It's dollar or turn it back in. They turn it back in because they can't use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the lease, the way it's structured, is a dollar buyout. Okay. They have to have something at the very end, or it might say 10% buyout. The 10% is what the residual they're going to sell it. Okay. The finance is zero. This comes on your tax return as a rental payment, like you pay in the mm -hmm. office building here, comes off your taxes. Okay. This comes off your taxes in one block. Why do people, why rich people keep buying real estate? Because they never pay taxes. So at the end of when taxes are due, they give it away or buy something. Why do they keep flipping buildings? They really don't flip because it costs more tax liability. What they do is buy, take that property and buy another building so they never pay taxes. 
and they just get a lot of credit from the bank to pay it and it bills to their, their business and, and salaries or whatever benefits or reimbursements mm -hmm. within cash. So the difference with here, this comes off of your monthly payments, operating expense as a rental. Okay, you like you rent your car for your business, that's what it comes off of. It's a tax treatment, bottom line. This one, I can take in section 179, I can prorate this over uh, the life of a vehicle, seven years or five years if I want, or I can take the whole lump sum right now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This one, this is just the same thing I do, fuel and everything else. Payroll, all this is comes off my return. It comes out the same way. You get it from here or you get it from here. It's, it's for tax reasons only. Who's going to get this, uh, this tax benefit of the 150, the leasing company? Who gets it at the very end? You just get it at the very end to buy for a dollar or 10%. But they get that tax deduction of, one, of the whole value of that equipment. They just rent it to you and you buy it at the very end or turn it in, or, and that's it. It comes out the same amount of money. So, so many people say, I don't want to lease it. It's the same thing. It's a lease with a dollar buyout or 10% buyout. This one, I ain't paying any taxes the last couple of years because I've I bought like a million dollars of trucks. I have enough to pay, not pay for the next two years. So that I have a million dollars. I can't take a million dollars a whole year. So I'm going to have to spread that out for the next five years. As long as I keep it a certain level, I can deduct $1 million of trucks of equipment I bought. And I just do piece by piece every single year to make sure I have one Which one do you need? Do you need to go with or you um, I'm going to talk about that because it's an important thing about here. Okay. So I'm telling you, it equals out the same because you still own it at the end of the lease with the dollar buyouts. Hey, I want a dollar buyout, you want to get 10% value. Of the buyout. Still come out the same thing. You still own it if you want it. Mm -hmm. This one, you can just turn it in and move on. If it's costing you a lot of maintenance, move on. Okay. So the million dollar, when the truck gets to a million miles, it's the same thing for our old cars at 100,000 miles. Here, the cars will last you know, 200,000 miles when you start having real major issues. Man, you start running through major issues at a minimum. That's why Walmart wants it off. They really want off at like six to 700, okay? Because you're, you're only doing local with it from the warehouse to the area, that's it. Mm -hmm. So you want to get that high. But they know the same thing, 600 is start breaking down cost them more. Okay, so we understand these two pieces are exactly the same. You own it both ways. Okay, this one is giving you an option to give it back. If you have walk and you have those big, big things, it doesn't really matter. Okay, here is your, your tax um, not deduction. It is a deduction because your tax shelter. Because you're not paying, you expense all your taxes out. That's why you buy equipment. Like that generator that you really need because power keeps going out. But I need it for my home office. And I need solar for my home office mm -hmm. because the power keeps going out here because of the temperature or whatever. You can justify that. Right. Okay. We have two storms here. You can justify having the generator at home because if this building shuts down, I have to go. Mm -hmm. The only time this building shuts mm -hmm. down is when we have fireworks because the fireworks are right here because it's the only place it can catch a fire. You saw what happened this weekend at Fort Worth? Yeah. <laughs> that looks like a fire to me. <laughs> it's on fire. Arlington's been doing this building for the last 30 years because it's the only place that's just all concrete and open that they come here and we can't park. We can't even park here for that uh, the day before that evening because they don't want your car to catch on fire either as an ability or be liable to something. So bottom line, it equals out the same thing. It's a tax treatment. The question is that with the, uh, the lease, is there any depreciation? Or that is your depreciation, the whole value. Remember right. with Obama, he allowed you for tax reasons to take the whole lump sum yes. okay. for real estate or for equipment. Okay. Or you can spread it out like the old days, the life of equipment. 
where the trucks can really last typically is five to seven years of life because really they can last 30 years. We don't want no equipment to last 30 years. Real estate will last forever pretty much, but they say 20 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes you look at it, but I have one truck. I mean, I'm still with, with, with very good maintenance. Mm -hmm. Very good maintenance, yeah. That's what I'm telling you. You have to get a uh, good mechanic. Mm -hmm. So um on the on this slide right here, I put here. If you're doing a uh, uh, Walmart or a Target, uh, I would advise you to do maintenance on it. So you can, you know, part of your lease, it can just be wrapped in because that truck is going every single day, seven days a week. Okay. And sometimes going two shifts a day. So it depends on what you run the numbers and do maintenance with it, or you have a very good mechanic who's going to look at that truck every single week and make sure it checks out correctly. Okay. Um, I already talked about that, growing your business, um, low boards, I think you talked about earlier, when you come into the low boards, I'm not going to say they're going to jump, but it's just what I mentioned very earlier, you just need to pick up the, the carry and call them. Now, one thing that um, uh, there might be some deals on low board, but a broker posted them on there to, instead of you getting $8 a mile, you're getting 4 they get half of it, or they get the majority of it. So it's been brokered out. Listen, no direct company is going to ever put this stuff on the low board. They have enough people calling them to do business with. Them. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. We're going to talk about authority. You need to have a factor, Wix, W E X, is a factoring company, and also it's a fuel car. Okay, you have to have a factoring company in trucking. Okay. They, it's just the cost of doing business. They will charge you at 1% to 2% on 30 days. You're not, to be able to pay people weekly, either you're going to come out of your money, I'm only coming out of my money. But you need to factor this every single day to make sure you can use payroll on Friday. And if you don't, if you have two weeks of payroll, you'll get your money before then because most of them will pay five or 10 days. That makes me too nervous because uh one time we took another thing and I had to end up paying it and waiting for it to get my money back. Uh, I had one vendor that paid me for like 90 freaking days. I know it was a, a broker that was messing with us, did the invoice in March. And after we hound him, and it was like like it was like a fifteen thousand dollar invoice. But I paid the employees of me, the father and me. Not the following week, the week of that invoice. Mm -hmm. So I had like a week. I had to go pay twelve thousand, you know, or like ten thousand something. So my money is gone until they pay this invoice. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, we're not dealing with them. Get rid of them. They're not worth it. Uh, the record ones will pay you on time. So Wix has two things. They have a fuel card, okay, and they can link it up to your factory. You have to have factor if you're going to pay employees every Friday. I'm going to tell you this truck is a spark. I don't care if they're making $10,000 a week. They want to see they check in their account. But you're going to have to ante up that money. Factor, you can a 1% to 2%. But the good thing about WEX, they will advance you 90%. So you got enough margin to do that. 90% is excellent. Okay. You might can get a uh, good relationship at the while with me. You might can get 95% if they trust your vendors. I think we got 95%. Um, yeah, 95%. So these are more to make sure they cover their fees. So yeah, it's 95% of the WEX. We don't want to use their fuel. We'll have their fuel here. And also you can try Pilot. Has a fuel card queue. Quick trip has a fuel card. Mm -hmm. So spread this around. So hey, get them, they can have their own number. You can control their number, get on pilot card, get on that, and just watch the fuel. How do you say, okay, how do you feel that, well, we're in a situation where it's like theft, because I'm hearing that drivers will, and company drivers sometimes will be clever 
Is there a way to maybe catch those things? Before? You can see the pattern of it. Okay. Yes. Um, you get a lot of miles. You can very much calculate. This software mm -hmm. does that. Okay. I think both yeah. of them as well. Okay. You can see what the rate of gasoline is, for, and you know what the, the size of the gallon is. So mm -hmm. you can calculate in the mileage what that, that should look like. And we see us, you can't catch $50, but you can catch $100 and something. Dollars. Okay, why is this spiked up a little? Uh, what gas station is this? And you're using this that gas station, so they, the prices are going to be the same. You're going to fluctuate daily, mm -hmm. but you can see a little. You can't catch $50. Yeah. But you can catch two hundred dollars. Say, like, why is this spike? What's the reason of this? You need to explain to me what they receive. But with this, they're taking pictures of the receipts every day. Mm -hmm. So it don't take that much to. With this, uh, they log. They're uploading. Um, they're op uploading their gas receipts every single day. Mm -hmm. They get their work on there at the same time. So their assignments. So you can much track what's going on. Okay. And you already have it raised every single day between these two. Okay. So you can see, like I said, 50 you can't catch, 100 if you look real closely, you can't hide $200. And right now, if they do someone else's truck and try to get the money out, you know, they, they fill up as like six or $700. Yeah. Yeah, you can't hide, they know they can't hide that either. So, you can hide maybe 100 or 200, but they can, if you look at it closely, you can see, okay, that'll make sense when we use them there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Workman's company cover benefits. You can all get benefits from um, uh, OIDA has the benefits. Wex is WEX.com. You can apply yeah. for a factory account. Factory Okay. That is which not to read your contract to you for us out of that. No. Oh. Well, no, because what happened is the other lender will see that we have a uh, lien. Remember, they're leaning, they yeah, have yeah, an yeah, open yeah. lien. Yeah. Because they give you a lot of money. Yeah, because I think we have like a 250. Yeah. yeah. So they would see the automatic with UCC files. Yeah. And those are filed electronically the next year. Okay. Uh, talk about workman's comp benefits you can offer from OIDA. O O I D A dot com or dot org one of two. Um, also, ADP has can give you insurance rates for medical, dental, vision. You want to have this pension. You don't have to contribute. It's not more pension today. That's going to be cool. Ever gone because people live in small. That's really what the issue is. That's why they have a problem. People didn't live this long. They just had to, hey, you live for 56 years and you're gone, you're dead. Okay, 401k. Use all this you can get from OIDA, some other places. You can get this out. What package? The more employees you have, the less of Once you get to 10 employees, then you have a really good legacy. Okay. <laughs> Well, it starts to break because you have five. Uh -huh. Yeah. You had to bounce that with some other organizations to get out the different. You're really better at 20, uh, under 50, but 20, you're better. But at 10, you start to see a difference. A more competitive difference. That is only for trucking companies? That or organizations? Yeah. We, when you have younger people, it's better. But yeah, for trucking companies as well. Mm -hmm. Insurance for everybody is high, but you start seeing the they have more money they collect in the ten. That's what they're looking at the full money. Okay, so the camera's still over here. Um, payroll are covered, benefits are covered, factoring are covered. So in your circle of financing, okay. Talk about financing. We will finish within the next thirty-five minutes. Okay, finance is important. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket in finance. Okay. That's all I'm going to talk about uh, with finance. Remember when I was telling you about the SBA? Mm -hmm. It's the same as a mortgage, so the government's guaranteed, but you've got to be a good risk. Okay. Um, and it's not like the old days anymore. Okay. So when you're dealing with, the, you, when you're putting your finance piece together, okay, you need to look at, 
get your wish list off, you know, put your wish list down, but you're not getting anything on your wish list. So way you're gonna spread out, say I need 250. How many to 250? You really don't need 250. You just need a truck and a driver. And uh not to run out the gas for the first week in payroll. It's really it's all you really need. And insurance. You already paid your your insurance at the very beginning. Okay. So I need to get 250. How many get there? First of all, I need to get a company credit card. I'm going to guarantee it anyway. So just forget it. It's, it's something you want to do at the very beginning to be pretty good. So Chase Inc. is one. Uh, US is another one. Bank of America, all those. You need to get credit cards to get to me. You may even get $25,000 or $30,000. You may get up to 50. Easy federal. Then really, really good. Yep. Maybe federal is a good one. You got to prove themselves to them. Ken, Ken Fed. Ken Fed. That's a good one as well. USA. Well, I get to be uh, military. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So credit card is what the CC stands for. We're trying to put money together. A pie. The next one I talked about is factoring, right? Factoring, you should get easily $100,000. See how I'm get to these numbers? You have to do this to get everything you need. Okay, so this is company credit card. Um, if you want to get a small business loan, remember from the SBA, you have to be bankable. They look at every single thing. But you have to pass two underwriting tests. Not only you got to prove yourself through the micro lender like People Fund and Love Fund, okay? They are nonprofit lenders, people, and live. So you have to, the underwriting with them, but the SBA can come back and give them something totally different. So you have to actually appease two people. Uh, people find knowing that it's going to be guaranteed. The SBA say, oh, this is not going to work because it's not meeting their standards. We're going to tell you what. For us to guarantee it, this is what we want. Okay. So you got to go through two underwriting tests. So understanding that you're going for a mortgage is the same way. Do not go for them for assets. You want to go for cash. Why cash? They want to do assets. So say, can I get, I don't want to get a truck, but can I get like, credit? yeah, can I get $20,000 of my credit? Now, a caveat, you really have to be under $244,999. I mean, $24, Why? When you go over that, you that automatically have to collateral with the SBA. So, hey, I want $24,000. I want $2024. So, but I need a line of credit. But they, people find, not the SBA, wants some collateral. What do you have? They want you to buy a piece of equipment. What do you want to buy? Um, I don't care where it is. I'm gonna have some collateral to show on networks for other people. Say, hey, I need some computer. Uh, I need a copier. I need another ten thousand dollars. Say, yeah, we can do that. Yes, we got thirty-five thousand dollars deal here. So now we got thirty-five grand. SBA is happy because you're under the threshold. We're gonna have you in more paperwork and you can do this pretty quickly. Lift fund, the people fund is happy because it's, they can get a piece of collateral out of this. Okay? Because what happened is if the SBA paid that 85%, this can start taking care of that difference. I'm lost. Okay, so the SBA, are you saying 24999 for the SBA? Yeah, and the reason why anything over $25,000 okay. have to have collateral. Okay. Okay? So, they can do no collateral, just a line of credit, okay. and give that money to you as a term loan. Uh, to you if it's under that amount. Okay. Remember, there's two underwritings you're dealing with. SBA is one underwriting okay. because even when people fund or lift fund approve that deal, okay. you still have to go to the underwriting with SBA. If okay. they don't like it, they'll give you less headache if it's under this amount. Okay. Over this amount, they say, where's the collateral? Yep. Then they start nitpicking, ah, uh, this is not another collateral. Okay. Now, if you buy the truck, yeah, we love that collateral because mm -hmm. you're trying to get more money out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got a lot of credit here, the LLC, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
We got our money together. How much do we have so far? 185? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's the other piece come in. My truck. And trailer. Uh, before the pandemic, you can get a combo deal for like $80,000, $70,000 to $80,000. You see where I'm going with this? You get this amount, but you're strategically using this system to get there. Using the credit cards to give you some cash. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even put Pollard and Wex. Did I put, yeah, Wex is here mm -hmm. and Pollard. Pollard probably give you another 10,000. So you seeing how we put the money together? You're getting what, still what you want. And I'll raise this. Lift Fund is not giving you 250. The bank is not giving you 250 without any history. And you guys probably have a better chance because you've been around for 20 years. Even if you, you made 250 a year, you have a better chance of getting that because you have long term. Okay? And you made a lot of these. And you win. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. Caveat. If, it's, if you're a minority, um, they have check boxes. Women, check boxes. It's, it's, if you're an Anglo man, put it in a woman's name your spouse or whatever, because it's rather, you still get, if you're married or it's like your mom, it's worth doing that because your mom is going to betray you. <laughs> so, but, so, no, honestly, so. the 88, the last thing I'm going to talk about, yeah, it's, it's like that 50% or nothing, and I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes, but these programs in the future, I mean, the program, the minority program is going to be gone because the majority of the U.S., I'm sure by 2040, when it comes around, you say you don't need that because you now the minorities are the majority of the country. <laughs> so this is your last way. <laughs> From the civil rights movement in 20 and 18 years is going to be gone. They're going to, yeah, most, they say probably 2030, it'll start happening. But that next census is that 2040, that's going to go away because we're starting to see it's getting chipped away. And because now things are working. Honestly, it is working. Okay, so I'm getting to the 250 is the goal, right? This outrageous number. When you look at the bank, they're going to start looking at you. They're not giving it to you. Chase, maybe Fed, whatever, business card, you would probably get twenty to $50,000 with your credit. Okay? Wix is giving you $100,000. Anything you build, we advance you. We're giving you that money away. The same day or the next day. You have the money, right? That's all that counts. I'm pulling the pig again. I need some liquid just to have it in my pocket. Now, you don't have to draw this money out. You can just have it. Okay? If you pull it, invest it or whatever, just have the cash for the emergency day. Okay? And $24.99, you can get that pretty quickly from the SBA because it's $25,000. You have to have collateral. Lift bond once you get equipment. Mm -hmm. So get a copy or get a get something that you can use in production of your business. You have to have that. Or the the uh, uh, I don't want me the uh, I, the logs. You can buy those, or you can lease them. See, I need to buy those. Mm -hmm. But that part of the operation of this business you got another ten thousand dollars. So we got we got some clouds. What they're looking at is covering the part the SBA does. So if you default or you drop dead mm -hmm. and this comes due, they can go to the same mm -hmm. drop dead. Let me go. You're going to get 85%. Lift mm -hmm. line is looking at how we're going to make that difference. Can we get something? So that's what the something is. Okay. Um, they even will take a diamond ring. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, trucks and trailers do not go to the fund for that. Mm -hmm. Leasing companies. Uh, we'll do that for you. Mm -hmm. They will underwrite it and approve you within a day or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Why? Yes. You splitting the money. SBA wants you to do the truck and trailer. But what happened with you go to the SBA? They have lent it to you, but you have no cash. Yeah, they have the collateral. They're happy. The fund is happy, but you're not happy because you need some cash. This is cash, yeah, in one sense. But this is real cash in, in your bank account. Okay. 
uh, leasing companies will lease a truck to you the way you want it, lease it or finance it. They don't want us to do that. And Paula will give you a credit card for the line. Make sense? Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to get this number. Have we had 250 or over 250? Okay. Um, payroll, workers' comp, blah, blah, blah. Field parts, employees. <laughs> uh, LLC. We already talked a little about uh, Landstar, right? Um, Asmat, type of industry. Uh, the top industry is movers. The next industry is hazmat. The next entry is drone freight. Mm -hmm. Drone freight will be even dump trucks and hot shots will be last. Mm -hmm. The corridors. Now mm -hmm. you have an option to start your business and you can buy a business on along the way. If you have a business and you can show that you have 20% equity, you can use that business as collateral to buy another business. Mm -hmm. So if you buy a line, it's always been the industry, we can buy lines from Yellow Freight or from Landstar or from Amazon or Federal Express, those, those are lines that independent drivers provide. You can buy those line, lines if you want. You can buy the whole company or you can just buy the lane. They will lend you money on that because it's, it's proven to generate income. You don't have to start from nothing. You can do that if you want. How much do we put the group on? Uh, it varies. It can be, they might produce $200,000 a year. They might do two times the income, so two times net. Maybe like four eighty thousand dollars and sell it to you. You can get a loan from them with no problem because it's already has income. Mm -hmm. They already know what they're yeah, doing. That's collateral. Yeah, that's collateral. You can use that to expand your business. Okay, that's a strategy. Um, SBA we already talked about uh, contracting. SBDC, government contracts. VBOC if you're a veteran. Does that? PTAC office right on the street here at ETA. They will help you with federal contracting. Yeah. We talked about, you already know about social media because you're young, right? I'm making my own notes. Because so. mm -hmm. uh, I haven't done this in person for a while. Uh, partner, Marion, uh, Marion already talked about that. Partner with companies. Um, credit repair. We always going to be in a situation with credit repair, especially when you don't know what's wrong with the economy. Mm -hmm. The economy doesn't mean that a lot of people make more money. When the economy is bad, then the economy is good. Rich people, realistically, you see what happened when the economy went down. Uh, didn't really fall off the cliff, but we see how richer the country became during the pandemic. Okay, so that's beginning. And we want to say it's going to be a bad day. Truckers, you still going to uh, you still going to survive. You still going to move freight because we're used to it. I mean, is our life. Um, you can buy Amazon, you can buy Feather Express line, UPS line, and even the post office lines. They have independent drivers. Um, pro repair. You need to have a book of like $50. Oh, what's the, that Larry King thing? Credit Secrets book. Buy the book, it's $25. Have that as a backup to clear up the credit if something comes up. What's it called? Creditsecrets.com. It's telling you how to dispute things. Okay. It is worth the investment for 25 to 30 months for the Call Credit Secrets. Business plans, I already talked about that. As a strategy, we, we don't usually talk about, we're, that's our last topic. You got to be honest in mindset that you cannot go on love forever. There's nobody in this room. Do you really want to run this business when you're 80? No. Uh, or, or 90? No. I can tell you, your kids will sell your business for you. <laughs> they will tell you in your face at five years old, seven years old, 15 and 20 and 25 and 30. They will, the day that you close your eyes is the day they're going to sell their business. Yeah. And they're, they're honest. They're telling you. They don't want to do it. Okay, they don't, they might have not thought long-term. Mom and Bob had this business from grandpa and grandpa for 150 years. They're going to sell it. <laughs> they'll sell the farm. They'll sell they live in for today. They're not worried about what happened in the future oh. at all. <laughs> it has always been. Yeah. Right. And because they don't suffer anymore. <laughs> but they will. 
And so you need to say, <clears throat> the way they used to solve this back in the old day is that yep. with land, grandparents will say, okay, so we're not fighting over stuff. This is your track. This is your track. This is your track. I'm titling in your name. So when you die, you fill out a form in Texas. And the moment that you die, they turn the death certificate in. It doesn't cost them much. They don't have to go to free bank. They just need to turn that, uh, that certificate into the county and it transfer automatically to their name. Mm -hmm. So they have it, have it, and have it, and call it a day. There's no dispute. So the way you walk out of business, like for example, don't get personally involved in the business like it's your baby. It's a business. You can start another one the next day. Mm -hmm. Be ready to exit that business if someone buys you out. Or if you are doing extremely well, that's when you want to sell it, okay? Because your kids, if something happens to you, they will sell it for you. They will. They will sell it for you. And we know our kids. They will sell it for you. They don't care if it's been in the family for 150 years. They will sell it. Uh, they don't care. They just try to get if it's if they say a million dollars, okay, when I sign. They don't care. <laughs> it is not that they didn't work for it. It's just extra money for them. So when, when I'm talking about an exit strategy, understand that in any moment someone can buy you out, like I did. Several businesses, they bought us out. They say you want to offer. I'm not being greedy with it. I say, okay, what are you thinking? Okay. I just want to know, keyword, like, help me out. What are you thinking? And so, because they already know what they can afford. Um, don't be greedy if the business is not worth that much. But if you exit with no debt and you just have cash of $50,000 and you go reinvest it with something else, go reinvest it and move on. They might do a non-compete. Do not be in the same industry with me for the uh, next 12 months or 24 months. And that gets me established. Or you stay on with me. We pay you for the next six months to continue as we train my people to take over. You getting your, your exit money back, okay? They're paying you $100,000. Might be a lot, maybe not. Or then they're paying you a salary for 50 to stay on to keep the customers and everybody happy for six months until they can be able to establish a relationship with them. We're not going to ever live forever. And you're not going to do this at 90. And I, only, I know only a few people, uh, Leah in uh, New Orleans at New Orleans restaurant that Obama went to. It's, it's world famous. Everybody goes to it. Uh, she said, I don't want my kids to have it. <laughs> so until she got sick, she worked every single day until she's a good day off, but to 96 years old, till she closed her eyes and she dared them to sell her business. So she said she was coming, coming back, but eventually it's going to get sold. Uh, eventually now the, their, her kid is seven years old. She's 96. You can see how this is, is going. Not her. She might long as her seven year old is fine, maybe ten years. She lasts that long, but her kid don't have that same attachment to her. Who are might you know maybe he in their fifties, and definitely that you know the thirty year old, twenty year olds is not okay. Whatever. So the bottom line is have an exit strategy. Do not be greedy with it, with the money, and be able to just, you can go into another business. Okay, so anything before we go, I want to overfill you to make sure a lot of things were repeated, that you understand uh, the process. And um, I think I'm gonna have Joni to send out by Monday, the video. Hopefully you got here, it says it's recording. Um, yeah, it's gonna be strange because this is an actual live class then versus condensed three hour class, but you won't get as much you won't get the interaction with us. So Myron is available, I'm available. Um, the VBOC is available for veterans to help because uh, you have to be a veteran to be, for them to help you. But Myron also, again, is part of SCORE. He'll help you, I will help you. My mobile number is, yeah, it's 281-780-5500. One seven two eight. They think I'm crazy of giving it out. If I say honestly, I don't get a lot of calls anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, I might get some at the very beginning. So after doing Tim Shake, it's like racket with a J. J A C Q U E T. 
And you can call me anytime you have any questions. Um, um, I'm in and out of town uh, during the summer. Um, but yeah, you can call me. I'll, I'll answer the phone. Or just text me and say, hey, I'm calling you for this. Morning. It's 281-780-1728. Email is the square email is Tim dot J A C U U E T at score volunteer dot org. So any of you guys online wants to come in and ask questions, I'm here. You can ask them in chat or you can come online and ask. Okay, great content. Okay, where can come to answer that? Um, if you have anything, you can just come online and ask them. So that's it. Hope you got what you needed from the class. We're here to help you. You have all these resources, SBA. SBA doesn't do counseling, but SCORE does. You can do it here for work or you can do it there in Dallas County. Thank you for coming today. Please put everything in the trash and we're gonna make, since they're giving us this space for free. Remember, we volunteer, we work for free. I think we didn't mention it at the very beginning. So this is all the office. office. No, no, this is, this is my office right okay. here. But the building management gave me this office for free. So if you can just put this stuff in the trash and put the chairs nicely in, and for one second. And if you have questions, you can reach out to me. Oh, anybody for, I need to make sure that score gets credit for. Anybody needs to pay today? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. You, who, do you have to? Anybody else? Pay for what? Uh, pay for the class. Some people didn't. Oh, that, oh, we already. Uh, I thought you were talking about pay for the problem. No, no, that's included. So if you go on the website. Did Mary ever come? Um, oh, you're Mary. Okay. Okay. What about Wendy? Oh, thank you. No, Wendy? Maria? Maria, I just pay for me, but I bring my. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, with this, I'm going to stop. And again, I gave you my telephone number online, folks. If you need to call me, call me at 281 780 1728. I'm here next hour. You can ask a question. Take care. Thank you.